Dealing with an accident and injury claim can be overwhelming. Let Phillips Law Firm fight for you. We understand the pain and suffering, and we're here to guide you through. Call 1-800-JUSTICE today for a free case review or visit justiceforyou.com and let Phillips Law Firm help you on the road to recovery. Hello, I'm actor and small business owner Ty Burrell, and I'm going to tell you how Innovation Refund's network of independent tax attorneys help eligible small businesses file for the ERC. Also, they're letting me play with the soundboard, and I love it. They analyze and interpret ERC claims to help businesses get the refund amounts they may qualify for. Go to innovationrefunds.com or call 1-843-REFUNDS. Innovation Refunds does not provide tax or legal advice. We work with an independent network of tax professionals to evaluate and process your claims. Terms and conditions apply. Ty is a paid spokesman. Hey, this is BJ. Thanks for listening to our show's podcast. If you're a fan of all things geeky, you should check out my other podcast, BJ Shea's Geek Nation. We have new episodes every day, and you can check it out at bjgeeknation.com. Your home is going into foreclosure and you feel like a financial wreck. You don't know where to turn for accurate information. I'm bankruptcy attorney Travis Gagné. Let's talk about some legal options. If we work quickly, we can propose a plan to save your home, modify the loan, or in many cases, even eliminate your second mortgage. The consultation is free. I've helped hundreds of people just like you make informed decisions about whether to save their home or exit it on a reasonable, organized timeline. The chapter you choose sets the tone for the next chapter of your life. Please contact me today at ChooseTheRightChapter.com. That's ChooseTheRightChapter.com. 99.9 KISW, The Rock of Seattle. All right, we still got a couple weeks before we actually officially hit summer. Okay. So uh, I thought maybe, you know what, uh, we should help out the children. Yeah, because this morning it kind of reminded us, we're not in summer. Oh, no. Yeah, <laughs> I parked outside of my house and it was raining. Oh, well, it's a Seattle summer. That's true. Uh, yeah. Old school time. Um, today.com, which I didn't even know existed, but there it is. Today.com put out an article. Wasn't well, it the, the TV show, Today Show, right? Yeah. Is that Oh, is that, is that, that them? Is? Right? Oh. Yeah. Oh, I didn't realize it was actually the Today Show. You figured what they would have called it. Okay. All right. That makes sense. It does, actually. Yeah, I totally just thought it was some rando site. All right, so the Today Show people put out an article about the five common summer activities that can be super dangerous for kids. Ooh. I wonder which ones we've been guilty of. Oh, all of them. Oh. I'm thinking all of them as well. Well, when you were a kid, yes. think about this. They didn't care about our safety when you and I were kids. No, in fact, I think they encouraged us to hurt each other. Yeah, I think they were like, look, that's one less mouth to feed. Let's, you know what, plus we didn't like that big mouth. Hey, if he doesn't come back, he doesn't come back. Did playing lawn darts at, at night on a beach make the list? Uh, it did not and should have. Okay, because that's uh, what my, bro- my buddy Chris and I would do. Yeah. yeah, playing with fireworks is the closest thing to that. But you're right, Steve. The, the, the pointy-ass, crazy-ass toys that they let us play with. In the dark. Yeah. Well, I mean, I can't do anything about that. You know, the pan- you know what happens at the dark, though? The, the the older folks, the parents, they probably have a beverage if they're on vacation. Yeah. And, and less Fs are given when you guys are basically spearing each other with lawn darts in the dark. I'll never forget. My buddy Chris and I were at Breezy Point, which is like a little like beach community in New York, kind of like a Rockaway Beach type of a vibe. And we're like, we're going to go out to the beach and, and play with these lawn darts. And all of our parents were just like, all right, come back later. <laughs> like, we're not sure. Like, and when we started playing, we're like... We finally realized this is dangerous because, <laughs> like, we'd be playing, and, like, I can't see the dart, and all of a sudden, and you're like, oh, crap, that thing just landed right by my face. Yes, it like, did. It just flew right by me. And that's, you know, again, that's just the, the, the Darwin intelligence test. The yeah. parents knew that, look, this planet will be a better place if we give our kids lawn darts. And now we'll I get sure. why they were so surprised when we both came back. Yeah. Oh, you're like, both back? Gosh, oh. I really thought one of you would have been gone. We were hoping. Man. They had a pet going. Yeah. <laughs> like, I think it's going to be Chris this time. <laughs> that's probably the one. That, that was their Mensa test. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? We don't have to take it at Mensa. Here's some lawn darts. We'll see who comes back. I guess these kids will survive. So number four on this list of summer activities that can be dangerous for kids, hanging out any, in, in any way, shape, or form with Steve's family. Yes. Uh, that was that. Playing with fireworks at number four. Oh, yeah. Uh, I saw they said they suggest now instead of kids playing with sparklers, they say have kids play with glow sticks. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, of course. I mean, I, I, even sparklers are are sparklers are a problem. I, 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 I mean, those those were safe fireworks that they used to give us because they didn't want us to play with fireworks. I mean, if you poke your friend with it, you <laughs> might kind of give them a little bit of a zing. Well, <laughs> you could probably hurt somebody with a sparkler if you crack it open and throw it in their eye. 
That's what I'm talking I about. I mean, not a, a sparkler. sparkler. I meant a glow stick. If you crack open that glow stick and drip it in their eye. Okay. Can, uh, okay, that's a little bit of a stretch. But you can. <laughs> no, they're you know, hard. Prove that to me. Prove to me that you I can crack a, open a glow stick. I now have a challenge. Yeah. They're rubbery. They're like they're, they're flimsy. You're not going to be able to break I'm going to cut open. it with a knife, maybe one of your lawn darts, and I'm going to spread glow all over you. See, the thing is, it's not so much a, it's a safety thing with the sparklers. It's the fact that they last like five seconds, and then you have to get another one. So it's just saving money. Mm. Oh, that's just get so, the glow sticks. So what you're saying is, is that really it's just cheap people trying to make us feel like we're in danger. I think yeah. you're just prepping your kids for their Molly phase when they finally hit their twenties. Yeah. yeah, and that's very dangerous. <laughs> I was gonna say instead of pyros, you want your kids to go to raves. I get you. I mean, like, one's safer than the other, I think. Well, yeah. Uh, this one here again. We all. Well, I don't know if uh, Vicky and Danny did this this much, but uh, Steve, you and I did riding a bike without a helmet. Yeah, Always. Yeah. Oh yeah. Absolutely. Well, it was not frowned upon on my in my generation. I mean, no, they no one ever thought of putting a helmet on. It was past my teens when all of a sudden it started becoming a thing where they're like, "Hey, you guys could hurt your skulls," and we're like, "Well, you didn't worry about us when we were kids. <laughs> we turned out just fine. Look." Well, that's how I cracked my head open when I was a kid. I got See? Hit, I he got turned hit. out just fine. Well, Did he though? I got hit by a car uh, that on because we were on the back. The rule was if you're on the back streets, you don't have to wear a helmet. Mm-hmm. But the minute you get like if you try to go like on a main street, you're supposed to wear a helmet. But a, a kid was chasing me with some like thorny whatever like rose bushes and was throwing them at me. So I turned on the main street. Car hit me and I did a flip and cracked my head open. Oddly enough, number two, thorny rose bushes yeah. are the most dangerous thing there. I like how Danny said, "Yeah, I didn't have a helmet on." It had nothing to do with riding a bike. It had to do with getting hit by a freaking car, which I think at that point. Well, I was riding a bike too. Oh no, I was oh, riding, I was on my bike right. and I turned. Oh, yeah, into I was a tracking that. Yeah, oh, I totally yeah. missed that. I thought a kid was chasing with thorn bushes and he was just running. That's, no, no, that's why he was on. He didn't stop to put his helmet on because yeah. he's being chased on his bike. BJ, come yeah, on! I, I, I had no idea that you could be like. So was he jousting you with the rose bushes? He was like throwing them at me. He had a bunch of them and was just like. Well, look at yeah. Danny's like. I'm not going to outrun the rose bush guy. I need to get on a bike. Yeah. Did he have special gloves on? Because wouldn't he be also pricking? himself i agree he would think so but no he didn't what is it what was he so well, how how are you can you throw a rose bush at people and not hurt yourself that's he's, amazing he's thorn man yeah, thorn yeah. Man. wow uh going in or near pools unsupervised yeah this i mean look there's so many tragedies you've heard about with the fact that i mean it, it, it Dude, is, I, I get nervous even if tatum's near a puddle i'm like okay you good because, I, I mean, you hear those horrors. Like, actually in the bath, like, dude, it took a while until I finally was like, okay, she's okay. Yep. I don't need to uh, freak out now. Like, you know, when she was a little kid, you're just, like, so fearful of them going underwater. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, and, I mean, as I said, man, there's just, especially celebrities. So, you know, it seems like, you know, in every decade, there's a celebrity that mm-hmm. had one of their children pass away because of a pool incident. Um, swimming in rough ocean. Which I think oh a lot of gosh. folks really don't. If you're not used to the ocean, you don't know that if you get in a bad patch, it ain't good. Dude, I think about it a few times. We were we were big into boogie boarding, like, you know. Oh, yeah. I remember, yeah. And then sometimes like a massive wave would take you under, and it was most. I mean, thankfully, it wasn't anything bad happened to us, but it could have. Yeah, dude, I had that happen to me in Hawaii. Yeah, uh, it, it's scary when you go. Whoa, I don't know which end is up. It's the yes. wave is that big and it's taking me under. You just need that one lesson about. This wave is way more powerful than I thought it was. I'm done. Yeah. It blew out my contact lenses. That's how, like, it was nuts. I, I, the wave rolled me around. I was like, you know, spin cycle. I get out there, and everything's blurry. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, this wave kicked my ass. I didn't know which way I was going, and it blew my eyes out to the point my contact lenses are gone. And I'm like, okay. So, yeah. Uh, fireworks, as we said, number four. And number five is something that I think, you know, really the repercussions until old age, really. And that's spending time in the sun without protection. Uh-huh. Oh, you I don't, don't realize go, it. Oh, in the summer, I don't go outside without wearing a condom. Oh, good for you. Yeah. You know, I, I, I think that's, that's very important. That's the we're talking about, right? I feel like, yeah, because yeah. you just never know who you'll impregnate walking on the beach. <laughs> you just never know. <laughs> you never know. It could be a jellyfish for all I know. You don't want you and the jellyfish getting together because that's going to sting anyway. It always know? is that, that first day of summer where you're like, I'll just be outside for a couple of minutes. And the oh, next yeah. thing you know, you get in. And it's not until you take that shower, for me at least. I'm like, oh, I got a little color. I'm all right. Take a shower. I'm like, that was a terrible idea. Yeah, you feel it. Like, mm-hmm. why is this shower uncomfortable? Not only that, make sure you do it correctly or have someone do your back. Because my brother recently got a big old sunburn on his back. You just see like a handprint for when he was able to reach and didn't do the rest. I'm like, oh, you yeah. idiot. Yeah, that's it. You got to have a you gotta, you gotta have a back buddy. I'll have to were. post the picture because it is hilarious. Okay, that's pretty funny. Yeah, I li- I'd like to see that myself. Yes. Well, there you go. Those are the top five things that, uh, you know, summer activities that, hey, could be dangerous for children. So enjoy the summer.
So, Danny, go out there with no sunscreen. Don't wear a helmet. And, uh, and I'll bring the lawn darts. Yeah, have a great time. Yeah. Someone says I have two sets of those old school lawn darts in my house. Uh, they're a hit when we bring them down for events at the park. All the intoxicated Gen Xers will play them for hours. Huh. Yeah, you're, you're, are you hoping to thin out the the, the, the Gen X crowd with this? It must be a millennial yeah. trying to take out the Gen Xers. I get it. You know what? I, I understand why. They, 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 they know what they're doing. Oh, they do it at their house in Desert Air. Ever been there? Where? Desert Air. Where's that? Uh, it's... Uh, it's it's kind of like eastern, uh, going to like past the gorge, I believe. It's a cool area. I had a buddy that had a oh, spot there. No, I've yeah, never been there. Super nice. Really? Yeah. Is there water? I mean, my buddy had a pool, so yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> I mean, I hear the word desert, and I feel like it's probably if it's yeah, desert air. Like that's some water. Oh, look at that. Yeah. Oh, that looks gorgeous. Look I at think that. It's kind of near. What's that place that all like the like the younger like people go and party? Chelan. Crescent. Oh. Crescent Lake is. Oh, it? I, I don't know about young people and partying. I don't know. I don't even well, know that there's a hip you spot. You don't? You that's don't probably, know? Uh, maybe that's why I don't know about it. They're like, don't tell the old guy. Oh, I can't think of it now, but there's like a spot. Oh. Desert air, huh? Yeah. It yeah, looks like a pretty cool community. Man, no wonder I don't know about it. They're just like, yeah, let's, let's keep it on the down low. We don't want that old guy coming over here. <laughs> okay. There's a magician who is using his magic to get dogs in shelters adopted. Steve's going to tell you all about this. He's got the mix report for you at 617 on The Rock. BJ and Migs, mornings on The Rock, 99.9 KISW. They called him the most powerful man in Hollywood, and he really was for decades. He extended his tentacles like an octopus throughout the entire entertainment industry. Mr. Lou Wasson. This is Glitter and Might an Odyssey Originals documentary podcast series written and narrated by me, Sean Levy. All episodes are available on the Odyssey app or wherever you get your podcasts. 99.9 KISW, The Rock of Seattle. Guns N' Roses, they're going to be at Climate Pledge Arena on October 14th. Tool also coming to town, Tacoma Dome, October 20th. And how about this? We believe we may be able to send you to both. Hell yeah. October shaping up to be a good month for concerts right there with those two bands. Yeah. All right. All you got to do is listen this week between 6 a.m. and 10 p.m. That's how you'll get the code word. Then once you get that code word, text it to 206-803-7625. That is how you're going to have a chance to win tickets to both shows. And at 747 this morning, yep, we got another code word to give you. Giving you a shot at winning Guns N' Roses and Tool tickets. And uh, by the way, today is when you can buy those tickets. They both go on sale at 10 a.m. Guns N' Roses and Tool, two different shows. You want more info? KISW.com. Well informed on the issues of the day? Nope. Not this guy. Live from the KISW News Center in downtown Seattle, this is the Mix Report. Well, thanks, you guys, and thanks to Palace Law for giving us the Mix Report. And today, Bust out your Donald Duck impression, BJ. It's Donald Duck Day. Oh, really? That's all I got for you. I, I, I can't I, do one. We either. always try and we all fail. Maybe that's the goal. By next year, we could all do a Donald Duck impression. I, uh, I'm going to let you try that. And do okay. That. Yeah, it's not going to be a goal of mine. All right. Well, maybe a goal tonight for you? Yeah. Make some sweet loving. Happy National Sex Day. Oh, that's going to be tough. Uh, um, the wife is not in town. Well, you know, there's other ways. Other? Well, yeah, I, I don't try. You can be in touch with yourself. Oh, okay, sure. Or you can do a Zoom boom boom. I don't trust it. Doing the boom boom on the Zoom Dude, you know other people have access to that video. I don't, Who's I don't, not watch that? Oh, I don't like it. I don't I, like I, I know I, that the, I, people can see that stuff, right? Would you FaceTime? I mean, you know you know, someone from Apple's watching. Well, let them. <laughs> I mean, if that's what they want to do with their night. Well, I don't like I it. think there's better things you could do. Maybe, well, watch the Mariners. Well, maybe not watching the Mariners. Maybe watching me might be more fun. I don't know. Yeah, it's a good call. I'm not sure. It's also National Marriage Day, so I don't know. That's kind of odd. That oh, on Sex Day and Marriage Day. I think it's good you put them together. I think whoever's married out there decided to also proclaim it National Sex Day so they could get laid on National Marriage good Day. Good call. All right. Well, everybody have fun tonight and do this. Yeah. All right. Let's talk about this ma magician in New Jersey. If there's a story about a magician, of course, I'm going to read it. And yeah, dude. Yeah. This is a feel-good story. This guy's been making videos of him showing... He goes to shelters, like dog shelters. And then he does magic tricks 
for dogs. Nice. I mean, simple ones. Like, he'll make uh, a dog treat disappear. And he posts the video of the dogs reacting because all the dogs have different reactions. They're just like, where the hell is the dog treat? Some will, like, tackle him and wag their tail. Others will just kind of look dumbfounded. The video is pretty cute and pretty adorable. The crazy part is because of these videos, it heightens the uh, awareness of these dogs needing a home. And people have been adopting all the dogs that he's doing the magic tricks with. Oh, that's a, that's brilliant. So here's this guy. His name is John Stessel talking about this uh, unique way of getting dogs adopted. There's not many times in life you feel like you have a superpower. And I realized like one of my like small, tiny superpowers is I can just help dogs show off themselves in a way that they couldn't without me. And then we just let the dog be who they are, which is how are they going to react to seeing something that was once in their physical world vanish? And then typically, like in the video, the dogs just go nuts and they all have silly different reactions. Yeah, one of the dogs I'm watching is just looking at him like, what the F, man? Where the hell did the dog treat go? Am I going to have to eat your hand? That is that is amazing. And he's right. I mean, you get to see that, that the dogs, if, how they react is going to be like, okay, that's a good indicator maybe of how you're going to be at the house. And I'm like, that's pretty cool. Then the crazy part about this entire story is he's massively allergic to dogs. And he still wow, does this. That, yeah, he's a better man than me. Here he is talking about how he's better than BJ. I'm highly allergic to dogs. So in these videos, I actually am like taking like three or four Benadryl throughout the shoot because I'm like, like at one point, Diane's like, just so you know, like you're starting to get like little hives. I'm like, oh, like I need another Benadryl. That's pretty cool, man. Here's a guy on a deal with the allergies and he's still doing it. Dude. This is what the great Joe Genie needs to do. I bet you this guy is if he if he's not getting girls, he could do this. Joe does magic for their dogs, and the the girls are going to be like, "What's up?" I don't know. Already, he's been doing magic for cats. He's been making p words disappear for quite some time. Wow, he's, he's not wrong. <laughs> well, that's a good line. That's true. It'd be a better joke if I could say the word. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's a good point. We'll do that joke off air, yeah. and we'll all laugh and rejoice at Joe's misery. Yeah. Love you, Joe. Thanks, guys. Dude, I have a crazy story that happened here in Washington State about a 10-year-old girl who got lost with her family. They were, like, in the wilderness, I guess, somewhere in the Cascade Mountains. Disappeared. They Ooh. couldn't find her for 24 hours, and she survived. Whoa. How scary is that? Imagine being the parents and the family. You lost your 10-year-old, and then you don't find her until the next day, and thankfully... She followed, I guess, the river, and according to some people, yeah, she was very resourceful and resilient for being a 10-year-old especially, and she said, yeah, I was trying to go to sleep at night and wake up early in the morning, and then I was going to find my mom and dad in the forest, and, and that's exactly what happened. They found her with only minor scrapes, and she's okay. Wow. So I'd be pissed at my parents. Like, where the hell were you guys? Yeah, that, that kid's going to be a trailblazer, though. They better have gotten her some ice cream after Oh, yeah, you know you're getting ice cream. So you go from that person nearly getting lost, then to these three guys that got lost at, almost got lost at sea, while on a giant inflatable duck. <laughs> Could you imagine if that happened? Apparently it got swept out the sea, and it was a little bit of a scary thing that happened. Like, I don't know if you've ever seen those. I've I seen them at like, festivals, like giant swans, that, where like 10 people can sit on those things. They're pretty cool looking, those giant inflatable like ducks and swans and unicorns. I don't think they ever expected that they'd be like going away from this area that they were at. They were being swept out to sea. Luckily, <laughs> there's some giant inflatable ducks that you found. Oh, okay, yeah. Thankfully, rescuers were able to get to them and bring them back to shore, and everything's okay, but they did decide to nickname them the Quackers. Damn, dude. So they had they had to be rescued. Yes. What Imagine if they? you're thinking, is this how we're going to go out? So they had to be drinking and sort of passed out a little. What do you think? I don't know if they were passed out or if they were just drinking and oblivious. Yeah, I mean, how do you not know, like, okay, man, uh, we can't see the shore anymore. I'm always checking. I am all, whenever I'm doing anything out in the water, I look right. for the shore. I just, because I know you can get swept out there, man. They, you think they were stoned? Oh, they were, yeah, there's something, they had to be altered in some way to be just like, dude, where's the coastline? You know, someone had to call me like, how can we find them? They're on a giant duck. I yeah. think you'll be able to spot these idiots. I feel like, yeah, I mean, it's a lot bigger than what they give us on those planes that go, hey, you know what? This is Tad. Yeah. All right. It looks like maybe we do have a Stanley Cup Finals a series. Finally. In fact, because, you know, going into last night, I wasn't feeling very optimistic for the for the Florida Panthers. They're down 2 nothing. The Vegas Golden Knights were just having their way with them in those first two games. But not last night. Not today, as that one woman would say. If I can find it, and I can't. No. So we'll move on. Not to not today. There she is. There we are. Dude, they're down 2-1. 
couple minutes left in the game. Well, just a little bit over two minutes left in the game. And Matthew Kachuk scores, sends it to overtime. They go into overtime, five minutes into overtime. The Panthers score. They win the game. It's now a 2-1 uh, game series between them and the Vegas Golden Knights. Pretty exciting. Yeah, it, it was reminiscent of that last game against the Bruins where the Bruins yes. had late game. They come in and they tie the game and then win, this, you know, they win that round in overtime. Dude, that arena was rocking when he yeah. scored that goal because they scored first and it was like everyone was hyped. There was a good energy and uh, I was watching the game. It was a lot of fun to watch. And when they, I'm watching, I'm like, oh, there's like two and a half minutes left. I'm like, oh, pulled the goalie. Bobrovsky played great. They pulled the goalie and I'm just like, I don't know. Next thing you know, they scored this crazy goal and you're like, okay, it's meant to be. Yeah. So I don't know what's going to happen in the next game, but this could be a series, boys. It really, really could. I mean, if if they're able to basically keep the puck out of that like they did last night. Yes. That's the key. <laughs> but you got to think, ooh, is Vegas going to regroup and find a way to just keep peppering again? Who knows? We'll find out tonight. Also, we'll find out how things are going to go in the NBA Finals. Uh, Denver right now has a 2-1 series lead against Miami. How you feeling, Joe? I got to go with the Heat again, guys. My buddy Whoa. messaged me. He said, this is their game. Oh, well, if this is their game. Is what? your buddy Charles Barkley? Like, why does your buddy's opinion matter? Because he's a big sports better. He said he put money on the uh, Heat. Ah, uh, well, if you put your money where your okay. mouth is, Steve. Hey. That's what he did. Now, spoiler alert, this is the guy that uh, went 0 for 6 in college bets during Sarah's wedding. So, <laughs> right, you know. So, so Denver going up 3-1 after tonight is Correct. what you're saying. Yes, uh, yes. All righty. Is he betting on the Mariners tonight? They're in Los Angeles taking on the uh, Angels. Nobody's uh, betting on the Mariners yeah, tonight. Yeah, it's a rough one. It's not good. Ah, oh, man. Tonight's the night we turn it all around. I hope you're right. I uh, hope I'm right, too. I, I, I hope you're right, man. It's, it's, uh, you just look at stats, and it's just not looking good. Uh, you know, the, the Kansas City Chiefs, they win the Super Bowl, right? So they, oh, those guys. Just like any team that wins a championship, you go to the White House, you get to spend some time over there, take some pictures, and get a jersey with, like, you know, all that kind of stuff. Well, uh... Andy Reid shared some information about his trip to the White House that I think we all needed to know, at least us on the show, because we're obsessed with food. And that is, what were they served? Yes. At the White House. Thank you, Andy. Right. So here he is describing, in a very colorful way, the food that they got to enjoy at the White House when the team was there. A French toast, grilled cheese, and ham sandwich. What? uh, That they sprinkled a little bit of powdered sugar on. I mean, it was phenomenal. Uh, The guys were... And it was... There was abundance of this. Uh, And... And then they had uh, chicken fingers, exotic chicken fingers. To boot. And then maybe the best part was they had, uh, which I hadn't seen before, but little bite-sized squares of the heart of the watermelon. Does, does he not get out in the summer? <laughs> does he not go to the grocery store? I mean, we have little squares of watermelon everywhere. Yeah, that is a little unusual, unless they were super fancy. This what is, was so exotic about the chicken fingers? Yeah, I would like to know, dude. Ex- of course, then again, like you said, does he get out much? <laughs> they were probably served with, like, honey mustard. Yeah. It was like, Dad, I've never seen this before. What, what does he eat every day? Just peanut butter and jelly sandwiches? Well, Why did that blow him away? He's called, maybe Kansas City, a lot of barbecue is all he gets, and so he doesn't have all this other, other maybe exotic stuff. I do like how you had to say, though, at the heart of the watermelon. So they don't waste any time with the, the stuff near, like, the rock. Yeah, it's maybe, just the, yeah. the the sweet spot, and they waste. So the, what he's saying is that the White House is just wasting their watermelons. They know how to live. That is delicious. Yeah, they can I, lie. There's a special name for when you French toast bread and serve it as a sandwich. I can't. I don't know what they call it, but is it a Monte Monte Cristo? Yeah, is it Monte Cristo when they French toast the bread? Is All it right, really? So, yeah. yeah, yeah so, I mean, Monte Cristo is a kind of sandwich, but part of it is French toasting the bread. Yeah, you French toast the bread, you put powdered sugar on it, and I think it comes with Swiss cheese and turkey and or ham. And they usually serve it with maple syrup. Yep. Any exotic chicken fingers involved in this? So he had a Monte Cristo without the meat, it sounds like, because he said they were just grilled cheese sandwiches, right? Yeah. Wouldn't it be funny if they just served him McNuggets and he had no idea? (laughs) It's these exotic uh, chicken fingers. They're all four different shapes, but the same four shapes. Very exotic. Yeah, look at that. Hey, these people it. at the White House are exotic. Hey, at the end of the day, shout out to Andy Reid for letting us know what they ate, because yeah, I was always you. wondering what was going on over there. First time we've ever heard that, right. I, or, or anybody's want to answer that, because they, they, that's good to know that they feed you well. I, again, I would love to go. I don't care what my my politics are. If my team is going and I know I can get myself a Monte Cristo, I am going to the White House. So said the exotic chicken fingers would be chicken strips. <laughs> that's right. That's pretty funny. Yeah. You know, strippers or exotic dancers. Oh, I see. Oh, I can tell by the I, look in your face. I was completely no, missing you, it. No, you looked completely yeah, like you're thank like. Thank you for explaining. You're that. like, all right. 
Yeah, I was like, yeah, I know they're called chicken strips. That's what they call them. <laughs> this BJ's looking at me, and it basically it was like this. All right. <laughs> yeah, I was not tracking that at all. I like all. that one. That was a good dad joke. Okay. Hey, if you're looking to see a couple members of the show perform tonight, there's two different ways. Oh, really? Tonight, if you're in Tacoma, you can see me wrestle. I'm at SOS Pro Wrestling. A big opportunity to maybe get the title back. We'll find out, but that's going to oh, be happening tonight. Oh, big night. That's at Edison Square in Tacoma, so if you want to see some wrestling or... If you're looking to see sad boy Danny V, he'll be on the ones and twos oh. at Emo Night tonight at Numos. Nice. I'm ready to cry. Either. And you'll see my hype man Joe jumping right next to me because he's always there yeah. as well. Joe, which type of white claw are we rocking tonight? Mango. Mango. <laughs> Mango. How about he already has a plan? Oh, it's summertime. That's the perfect one. Yeah. Oh, of course he has the plan. <laughs> and for my other hand, tangerine. <laughs> Is this his new method of trying to pick up the ladies? A little mango and tangerine White Claw? I don't know if a flavor of White Claw has ever gotten anyone laid, but I'll let you know if it works. <laughs> I'm willing to put money it won't get you laid. He, look, maybe that's... He's got to try everything, Steve. Dude, just say, hey, it's National Sex Day. Yeah. Oh, Wanna F? <laughs> Please use that. That's a line. Write it down. <laughs> why, do, why do you listen to Steve and think you'll have success at anything? Watch that one works. It might. It's not going to work. I'll you, bet you money right now. I already got a bet. There's, we're already in the middle of a bet with the Mariners. I can't keep adding <laughs> bets on top of bets, BJ. That's bad financial decisions. I know, I listen to Todd Peach every month. Yeah, you're running out of games for Teoscar Hernandez, though I haven't checked lately if he's hit 250 or not. But you're running out of games. Well, I don't think they, they haven't played yesterday, so he didn't do anything yesterday. Yeah, well, that's good. That's he good. Did, at least he didn't go down. <laughs> he didn't, he didn't yeah. go down. All right. Maybe he will on National Sex Day. I don't know. Oh. We're going to hit a high of 61 in rain. Did I say that? It's yeah. a crappy day today. And thanks to Snoqualmie Casino for giving us the mix report. And that's what's up. Yesterday, Steve, he did get this one wrong. In the 12 days of Christmas, what did my true love send me on the third day? Turtle doves. No. Um, five. No. Uh, <laughs> three. <laughs> Merry Marilers. No. Singing oh birds. No. You know what? I miss those Mary Marylers. Those guys really make the holidays. Yeah, I clearly don't pay attention to the lyrics. It is amazing. I mean, honestly, yeah, it's like been burned in my skull. At least, the, you know, the three French hens. Yeah. You got that down. Five golden rings. You know, four calling birds. Three no? Okay. Way to show off, BJ. I know, huh? I know my alphabet, too. You want to? Uh, you want a shot at beating Steve? You got it. 206803 Rock. We're playing beat. Maze will do it 647 on The Rock. Today's podcast is brought to you by bankruptcy attorney Travis Gagne, who's ready to answer your questions about bankruptcy. Travis, is it true that if you file for bankruptcy once, you can't file again? Even if you filed bankruptcy before, you can almost certainly file bankruptcy again. Different types of bankruptcies have different time limits between filings. In Chapter 7, full bankruptcy, you can only file Chapter 7 once every eight years. However, you can always, almost always file a Chapter 13 case. Chapter 13 cases can be filed uh, immediately following a Chapter 7. They can be filed immediately following a prior Chapter 13 case. Chapter 13 is a reorganization plan, so there will be some type of monthly payment, but it's based on your budget and your ability to afford that payment. So Chapter 13 is an option in almost all cases, uh, even with a prior bankruptcy filing. Thanks, Travis. If you have more questions about bankruptcy, you can reach out to Travis anytime at choosetherightchapter.com. That's choosetherightchapter.com. Thanks for listening. Southern Company is making energy smart and sustainable for their 9 million customers across the country. From modernizing infrastructure to achieving their interim carbon reduction goal 10 years early, Southern Company is committed to building a clean, resilient energy future. Learn more at southerncompany.com slash future. Southern Company, building the future of energy. Are you dealing with a personal injury? Don't go it alone. Turn to the experienced team at Phillips Law Firm. Their attorneys have helped thousands of clients get the compensation they deserve. Call Phillips Law Firm now. Call 1-800-JUSTICE or visit justiceforyou.com. Hello, I'm actor and small business owner Ty Burrell, and I'm going to tell you how Innovation Refund's network of independent tax attorneys help eligible small businesses file for the ERC. Also, they're letting me play with the soundboard, and I love it. They analyze and interpret ERC claims to help businesses get the refund amounts they may qualify for. Go to innovationrefunds.com or call 1-843-REFUNDS. Innovation Refunds does not provide tax or legal advice. We work with an independent network of tax professionals to evaluate and process your claims. Terms and conditions apply. Ty is a paid spokesman.
Hey, this is BJ. Thanks for listening to our show's podcast. If you're a fan of all things geeky, you should check out my other podcast, BJ Shea's Geek Nation. We have new episodes every day, and you can check it out at BJGeekNation.com. Your wages are being garnished. We can stop that now. It's hard enough to pay your bills when things are good, let alone when a big chunk of your take-home pay is gone before you even get your check. I'm bankruptcy attorney Travis Gagné, and I can stop the garnishment and get the creditors off your back immediately, often the same day as our consultation. Both Chapter 7 and 13 provide bankruptcy relief, but choosing the right chapter is crucial. In a free consultation, we can create a plan to get your finances back under your control. The chapter you choose sets the tone for the next chapter of your life. Please contact me today at ChooseTheRightChapter.com. That's ChooseTheRightChapter.com. 99.9 KISW, the rock of Seattle. It's our loud local band of the week, Panic Grass. Listening to the Loud and Local Band of the Week, Panic Grass. You want to find out how to get their music? Steve's going to let you know. Just put out a new record, and it's called New Miserable Space Ritual. So check it out now. And, of course, you can get all the info at the BJ and Migs page of KISW.com. Also, Sunday nights, if you're loving local music, you're going to love Loud and Local. Two hours of great local music starts at 8 o'clock. Bands like Panic Grass. Because we made it! It's Friday! Hey, Danny's jumping! We made it through another week, you guys. Yeah. And I'm not going to lie, I woke up this morning and was kind of very confused about the weather out there. <laughs> For real. Right? We ha- we've had a beautiful week. And then all of a sudden, I'm like, wait, it's raining. Okay. Two days ago, it was like 90 degrees or like high 80s. Yesterday, Seriously. there's like 80. Yeah. And today, yeah. 61's are high. Yeah. Hopefully, the weekend, it warms up a little bit. Yeah. Mother Nature's like, go F yourself, Washington. Yeah, yeah. the weekend, you're trying to have a good time. But nope. we got no smoke, man. We got no smoke, so Very I'll true. be happy with that. Very true. All right, let's get to our contestant today. We have Alicia Alicia from Linwood. Alicia, are you there? I am. All right, Steve, now get out. All right, goodbye. For those playing at home, Alicia has 60 seconds to answer 10 question, questions. You can pass all you want, but you only get three guesses per question. Are you ready? God, I hope so. <laughs> you got this, girl. <laughs> what Friends actress co-stars alongside Adam Sandler in the murder mystery movies? Um, Jennifer Aniston. Yes. What do you call the number below the line on a fraction? Denominator. Yes. The Knicks is a basketball team from where? Oh, God. A pass. Where is your humorous bone located? Um, your elbow. No. Yes. Uh, arm. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> what main two colors of a Butterfinger wrapper are yellow and what? Uh... White, blue. Blue, yes. What restaurant chain once released a stuffed cheese it pizza? Uh, Domino's. No. Pizza Hut. Yes. Snow and Fiddler are types of what crustacean? Oh, God. Pass. What river flows through the Grand Canyon? Oh, my God. Pass. What is the most common, <laughs> most consumed manufactured drink in the world? There you go. A Coke. No. Pepsi. No. Uh, right. No. 
five oh, correct. No. Oh, you were doing so oh, good God, in the my beginning. Husband there. Is gonna laugh. No, five, five. It's right in the middle it's of the road. Middle, it's average. It's uh, kind of like you know uh, the Mariners. Oh, are the Mariners oh, average? Yeah, they're. Well, they started slightly. out strong. <laughs> they're slightly average still. I thought they were slightly below average. average. Slightly below or slightly above. You never know with them, but it's been that way all season. It seems. You well, I mean, define them. average. It's really. Uh, to find average, <laughs> yeah. really? Do, do do we need to? Or yeah, yeah average is like you're like you're fifty fifty. Well, if every team's fifty fifty, then and you go a little bit below in your average, right? Okay, <laughs> maybe in your I'm, world, Steve. I'm trying to create a scenario where they're not bad. <laughs> okay, uh, that's well, nice well, they're they're okay. They're they're not bad. They're meh. Yeah. I mean, that's really what they are. Meh. Steve, yeah, I mean, they're not meh. Cincinnati. I mean, you know, uh, you know, they're, they're not Oakland. Steve, hopefully you're not meh. Are you ready? Oh, oh yes. What Friends actress co-stars alongside Adam Sandler in the murder mystery movies? Ooh, Jennifer Aniston. Yes. What do you call the number below the line on a fraction? The denominator. Yes. The ah. Knicks is a basketball team from where? New York. Yes. Yeah. Where is your humorous bone located? In the elbow? Yes. Nice. The main two colors of a Butterfinger wrapper are yellow and what? Yellow and blue. Yes. Nice. What restaurant chain once released a stuffed cheese at pizza? Oh, I'm going to go Pizza Hut. Yes. That sounds like a pizza. Snow hut and Fiddler thing. are types of what crustacean? Snow and Fiddler? Yes. Crab. Yes. What river flows through the Grand Canyon? Oh, the Fiddler Crab sounds kind of funny. Uh, what was that? <laughs> what river flows through the Grand Canyon? The, riv- the Mississippi. No. The Erie. No. The Kwai. No. Yeah. What is the most consumed manufactured drink in the world? I'm going to go Coca Cola. No. no uh, milk. No. Um, I don't know. Coffee. No. Oh. Beer. No. Beginning with T, what is the name of the little dot above a lowercase I and J called? Tittle? Yes. With a D. Yeah, and with that, you oh. get eight correct. Nice work. Which is way better than meh. You won eight to five. Oh. Sorry, Alicia. Yeah. <laughs> That's okay. My husband was listening, so... Uh, how about that? You tell your husband he's all right, because he married you, so he's got to be an okay guy. Well, he's mad. <laughs> wow. Okay. Yeah, boy. Alicia, you wow. have a fun weekend yeah. after that saying. Yeah, oh, I love going. you, Alicia. That was amazing. Man, no good compliment goes on... <laughs> he's mad. Yeah. I do uh, owe an apology to the St. Louis Cardinals. I just checked their record. They're not that far from us, actually. I I think Kansas City and San, and, and and the A's are the teams you got to compare to as being the worst. Okay, every, every, but you're right, Steve. Every other team is kind of the like they're all sort of right near the meh mark. Yeah, it is weird this year in baseball where everybody's kind of meh. Yeah, I mean, you get Rangers and AL West are doing damn great, but then everyone else is like kind of within striking distance. Yeah, uh, it's really, it is a weird season. Uh, mm-hmm. That's why you really can't count the Mariners out, but uh, I, I take a look at stats that make me scared. That's what I look at. I look at a couple of stats and go, I don't know about this. You stuff. know the best way to avoid that? Don't look at those stats. You're right, but I do. I, 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 and they're really simple ones, but I look at them every day and I go, all right, let's see how they're doing. Bum, bum, bum. And I'm going... Oh man, no! <laughs> you, you 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 know you got to be better in these stats. You're not going to go anywhere. You know, well, there's so. still a chance. So well, That's yeah. We, I mean, we haven't hit the halfway point yet. You know, I think we played about 62, 63 games or somewhere in that vicinity. So uh, sixty one right now. Yeah. All yeah. right. So you got another twenty games to go before you actually hit the halfway point of the season. We got though, time boom. to be not mad. Twenty game winning streak. Everybody forgets the beginning of this exactly. season. Exactly. And it they starts did, tonight. They yeah. did a fourteen gamer last year, and That's nobody thought that season. was going to happen. Yeah. yeah, we need one of those. Yeah, we just you know we just need better pitching. I mean, yeah. I, I think that can happen more so than thinking they were going to hit the ball because I just don't think. We're and what hit the turned ball. it around last year, BJ? I'm not sure. You a me. sweet fist fight with the Angels. Oh yes. right. And who are we playing right. this weekend? The Angels. Yeah, but it's the, time to kick their asses. Was Jesse Literally. on the team? Wasn't he the guy that started it? Yes. Well, you know what? Now yeah. someone else has to step up. Yeah, somebody's got to be the new Jesse Winker. That's yeah. fine. That was amazing, that fight. It was, man. He got pizza. Didn't he get pizza or something out of that? Yeah, deal? fans yep. sent him a pizza. Yeah, that was Can awesome. we trade for him just for the weekend? D- dude, seriously, sometimes that's really what you want. Yeah. I'm going back to the game. Does anyone know the river that flows through the Grand Canyon? Yes, no. Danny does. Colorado. Yay! Good job. Yeah. He actually does. Yeah. 
And what is the most consumed? <laughs> <laughs> Did you not believe it? I thought Danny was just I thought BJ was throwing Danny under the bus. Oh. So. No, I could tell Danny. You can tell when we play this game. I look at Danny's eyes and I know when he knows stuff. Oh. And then there are times where Danny just gets so arrogant with disdain about how stupid is the caller. That's my favorite thing about True. trivia. When you yeah. know the answer, all yep. of a sudden, like you have this god complex. Yeah. You do. You're like I'm yeah. smarter than you. You're so much smarter than you. Yeah, I'm the Colorado River. Does anyone know the most consumed manufactured drink in the world? I'm going to say tea. Oh, and you were correct. Yeah. Tea. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> You're yeah, so tea's pretty big. With that answer. I mean, you say that China. as I drink my cup of tea. <laughs> yeah. yeah, China, you know, Eng- England. I mean, in other places. I'm I sure. was just gonna say water. That's, oh, that, well, that was, well yeah. you know what? I mean, in a way, yeah, that's I mean, not manufactured. Do they? Sure. I know well, that's they the have thing. To collect, when they that bottle it, yeah, yeah. yeah, I guess we can really yeah, nitpick that. Filter question. it. I don't know. I, I, you know how I like to pick on Vicky, but I'm not sure on this one. Yeah. <laughs> nice work, everybody. Yeah, good job, Steve. Yeah, wow, you're on the yeah, I feel like we all put our best foot forward. Yeah, we sure and did, sorry, man. Alicia, that your husband's just a meh. <laughs> yeah, we'll see what we can do about that. Yeah. Actually, I don't know what we can do about it. This is National Sex Day. Maybe we got to import some talent. No. Well, maybe she just wants to ensure that she's not going to get any. No. <laughs> is there a way that, a, that really the average heterosexual woman with a heterosexual man can ensure that she's not going to get any? I feel like guys will forgive so much if, in fact, you go, hey, would you like to? I feel like that would end every argument for me. No matter how pissed I was, I think I would be like, oh, okay. Yeah, I mean, sort of them like, you know, just pouring hot coffee on their lap. I mean, I think anything else. I think- <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're right. I suppose if you scald my package, right. I perhaps might not be game ready. If you render it ineffective. I got news for you, though. I have still a feeling, try? I think I would still try. <laughs> I really God. do. Because, you know, you, you remember the days you're like, I'll go, I'll fight through anything. You know, when you're a young man, I'll fight through anything. I think I can get this done. <laughs> Rub some aloe on it. Yeah, that's right. Rub some dirt and take a lap. I'm ready. I'll be back. I mean, Walk it off. <laughs> hey, if you're having problems at work, I mean, I'm, I, I'm next to a real big problem at work here. Maybe you're having relationship issues. Maybe your husband's meh. Uh, or any other random problem where you need advice. Guess what? <laughs> Don't go to a therapist. That costs money. We are here for you. Calls for Texas now, 206-803-ROCK. It's help wanted. We're going to do it at 717 on The Rock. BJ and Migs. Mornings on The Rock. 99.9 KISW. They called him the most powerful man in Hollywood, and he really was for decades. He extended his tentacles like an octopus throughout the entire entertainment industry. Mr. Lou Wasserman. This is Glitter and Might, an Odyssey Originals documentary podcast series written and narrated by me, Sean Levy. All episodes are available on the Odyssey app or wherever you get your podcasts. So, I just got the State Farm Personal Price Plan on my car insurance. So you told your agent you play the bagpipes for your dog? What? No, I didn't get that. Personal, my agent just helped me create an affordable price just for me. Okay, let me show you what I've been working on. Hey, Buster! Call State Farm agent Sierra Belleville in Bellingham today. Prices vary by state. Options selected by customer. Availability and eligibility may vary. Is your relationship going sideways? Have a family issue? Problems with your co-worker? Do you need advice? We're here to help. No problem is too dumb. No dilemma is too silly. This is Help Wanted with BJ and Migs. 99.9 KISW, The Rock of Seattle. What is Help Wanted? Well, for years we've been getting phone calls, texts, and messages from rockaholics wanting our advice on whatever problems they're having. So if you do have a relationship problem, maybe a problem at work, maybe you got anything going on, and here's the key, does not matter how dumb it is, yeah, we're here for you. We are. 206-803-ROCK, that's the number to call, that's the number to text. Oh, we got one that wants the help of Victoria and Sarah, as they put in the text. Oh, oh wow, well, let's bring Sarah in. I didn't even know they, they needed it. I mean, yeah. I do, they do need help, but... We have a couple, actually, that have involved both Vicky and Sarah. Yeah, so they, maybe we can I bang mean, them both out right now. Pardon me, don't say that. I don't think we want that. The text. Isn't it? Yeah. I mean, geez. Phrasing, Lana. Phrasing. Yeah, yeah, it didn't come out okay, right. Okay. Okay, all righty. All right, so this one just came in like five minutes ago. Help wanted. I need help understanding what I'm doing wrong with my wife. So maybe a little help from Victoria and Sarah. 
All right, that's not a bad call. Sarah is a is is a new wife. I am. And well, I don't know what can Victoria can do, but all right, we'll give it a try. Let's see. Let's see. Okay, so I answer questions that she asks, and she says, "Don't give me attitude." I say, "I'm not giving you any attitude. I'm just answering your question." Then she gets more mad and says, "Stop giving me attitude." What the actual f am I doing wrong? Do I have to answer every question with enthusiasm? Or what is it? I love my wife and everything about her, but this has just been bugging me for a few years. I don't want to piss her off, but somehow I always do. Are you answering like the rhetorical questions? Like if she's venting and saying like, why would someone do that? And then you answer, of course, you might get annoyed. So I'm curious. But that's the like attitude though. Like, like why are you giving me attitude? Yeah, I'm curious. I I wish she left an example. Yeah, the context is one thing, Vicky. You're right. If if, if somebody's, you know, that would be the context. But the way, the the tone, tone is the key. Yeah. I get that a lot, actually, Mm -hmm. in my relationship. I'm currently in the middle of that where tone gets conflated with uh, other sort of situations that might be worse. And that's something you got to, you kind of got to work that out. And sometimes it's hard for you two to work out. It's like you kind of need a third party who can be a referee. It's really hard to work out stuff like this just with two people. It's hard. But how do you find a referee just to hang out around the house when you're just having random conversations? Well, I kind of use a code word. It really is like a therapist. Oh. You know, well, you, how do you find a therapist that's just going to hang around your house when yeah. you're having random <laughs> conversations? Well, you know what, for Steve, if you pay me enough money, I will. Oh, okay. Uh, I know, will say, a, 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 yes, yes. yeah, J-Rubs and I, I mean, we he, we kind of have a similar sort of issue. Is I I mean, I feel like I'm very like enthusiastic with kind of everything, and he's not, right? And so I'll ask him a question or something, <laughs> and he'll answer. But to me, I, I'm like, oh, like, are you okay? Like, that's what I'll follow yeah. up with. And he's like, oh, my gosh, yeah, I'm totally fine. Like, that's just his natural tone yeah you know so i feel like he should probably sit down with her and tell her listen like this is just how i answer questions it's no big deal it's not you don't look into it like i'm not trying to piss you off right or he could just you know act really jolly about everything when he's answering <laughs> yeah, like a little i don't recommend more. that like, yeah. Ho, ho. Yeah. yeah dinner sounds delicious <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. i don't recommend that but yeah i mean if that's just your natural i mean it happens to J. Rose and i a lot you know because i'm just we have different we speak different languages essentially sometimes so and his tone's different oh really that's yeah. so surprising that two different human beings speak different languages yeah i, I know. never heard of that yeah and he just has like a normal tone and he's not excited about everything all the time especially all the questions i ask him yeah whenever my wife gets worried i just do this <laughs> really? i'm sure she loves that yeah. <laughs> that's, that's just delightful I, I i i can see why you've been together for so long that's now she knows that yeah. i'm not mad i've had that happen over mm-hmm. for a little stretch where it was just like she's like are you grumpy i'm like no i'm just tired I, yeah you know, but i you know we keep going i'm like i'll let you know if i'm grumpy and then so yes. the next day i'll be like are you grumpy i'm like i thought i said i'll let you know now i'm grumpy what the hell stop asking me if i'm angry yeah. and then i go and then everything's good <laughs> I'm, a, I'm just going to say that, you know, I, it, look, it's not always women. You know, it just depends on the relationship. But there's always one partner in a relationship that for some reason doesn't know how to put themselves in the other person's shoes. To be like, what's their day? Do you have any idea what's been going on in their day to understand? Like, you know, like, you know, like Sarah J. Rubs. J. Rubs works really hard. So, like, on a daily basis, I know that when he comes home, I know, I get it. I don't even bother the guy since he lives in the same house with us. I go, I know what he's been doing all day. All he wants to do is just chill the F out. And so I just feel like sometimes, I'm not saying you, because you guys, I never hear you guys fight. So, listen, I, I, but I would say some partners just don't understand the other side. I bother him a lot. Yeah, I you mean, do. I don't. <laughs> Shocking. I mean, that's what you get Come from on, marrying babe, I want to go see the Dwarfinators. Yeah, that's nice. <laughs> He's I, like, do you have any friends? Please take them instead. Yeah. But I heard you sleeping. guys yesterday. You guys had a really good negotiation yesterday because you were doing what you do. And I really, I felt his pain because I know, like, the job that we have, and Steve, I don't know, and, 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 but we do, we're, we're hyper social. We speak more than the average human being speaks. So when the weekend gets there, you kind of just wouldn't mind a little quiet. I do. Right. I, I like it quieter than the, but everybody else who has a regular job, the weekend is the time to maybe socialize and really get after it. And it's, we're so opposite. And it took my wife so long to realize that. I've heard Howard Stern talk about this. It, it kind 
kind of was a problem in his first marriage. He said it's one of the reasons why it ended was she. He said, I just couldn't be a regular husband because of that, because of this crazy Didn't he just job. Like hold himself up in like a basement and like not even come out <laughs> for his kids or his wife. I think he would say, yeah, it, it, and like it, that's rather extreme. It's extreme. And eventually he went and got therapy and realized, oh, I know how to deal with it now. Yeah. He just he didn't know what to do. And so that was the best he could do. I just take 90 minute bathroom breaks. It's not weird <laughs> at all. That, well, that's what a lot of people do. I mean, dude, my dad used to do that, and I get it now because he lived with me. I How mean, much toilet paper are you using? No, nah, no, nah, don't worry, I'm good. We had one bathroom in the house, and I remember my mother's like, that's the only place that's his. Just got to let him have it. And oh, I'm like, yeah. But, yeah, but I'd be like, Mom, I don't no, want to go That was my there. dad. He's like, I got to go to the bathroom, and then we wouldn't see him for like two hours. Yeah, the best thing no ever. No idea what was going on in there, and actually, I'm glad I didn't. <laughs> yeah. It's all kind of making sense now. Yeah. Because J-Rubs takes a lot of bathroom <laughs> breaks. <laughs> Like, yeah. I'm like, are you okay? Are your bowels good? Oh, yeah, no. He but needs a break. I get it. He's oh, like, yeah. still has his pants on. He's just sitting on the toilet reading yeah. With stuff. his phone. Yeah. Yeah, you guys have a small space. He's got nowhere to go well, except that bathroom. Oh, yeah. The texture gave us an example. Oh, of here's the example it. of the tone, the, the the way he answers. Apparently, well, it's also hard with text, but... All right, you, you try to do a great... Can you do his voice, maybe an impression? Ooh. All right, sure. Here we go. She asked if I could go look for something in the garage. I said, yep, no problem. <laughs> Oh yeah, that's that. That's the tone. Mm. It's the honeydew. Yeah, yeah. And well, he yeah, what is he supposed to do? Be like, you got it, babe. Can't wait to see if it's in the garage with a big thumbs up. <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah, I. Uh... I mean, I get it. If the tone comes across as like this is a a big chore for him to do, like, oh, you can't just get up and do it yourself, then I would probably be like, you know what? Fine. No, you sit on the couch. I'll go look for it. Yeah, yeah but he said, yeah, no problem. He's doing it. Yeah, but like, I can yeah, understand. But, she's like, "Do I look pretty in this dress?" He's like, "Yep, yeah, you look okay." Like I can understand that being not so good. Well, even the way you said, "Yep, no problem," though, it you did. sounded like you did not want to do it. Yeah. I, I'm doing it, guys. Why are you guys giving me a problem? <laughs> like, you know, you, that's that. That's what she's upset with. But you with. asked me to do it, and I'm doing it. I don't need to say yippity dippity. I'm going. Yeah, to but get it. you did. I just want. I need to talk to a counselor. Yeah, you really. Guys. You yeah, you do. But, I mean, we do this. I mean, look, I do this all the time. The yup, no problem is really, the subtext is, this is a big problem, you be. Well, that's yeah, rather she, extreme. That's what she's hearing. And I get well, so... she needs to get some Q-tips for those ears because yeah. not, that's not what he's saying. Yeah, well, I, yeah, but you know what? There's a great... I mean, uh, like, like Brene Brown t- talked about this in her special. We are, we are feeling machines that think, which means our emotions lead. So she's hearing his emotion. Even though the words say one thing, his emotion is, I hate you, I hate this, I hate my life, wow. as he's going to the garage. Mm. I mean, that's the emotion. Even the way you read it. Yeah, no problem. You did a what, great job yeah you, you, bet, you sounded like a guy that was on the way to the Couch gallows is comfortable the yeah. game is on it's about to go into overtime we're not saying you're wrong i'm getting up i'm still doing but you're it. pissed about it you, you know? know inside because guys are grumbly you guys all beating up on me about this but you are you I you are grumbly from you guys aren't you guys aren't you a grumbly you're grumbly right now i need a break yeah you do <laughs> yeah, it kind of reminds me BJ Migs. of when you know like a guy asks a girl if she's okay or not and they just say she says i'm fine I'm oh, fine. yeah, and it's like, no, you're not. But you can clearly tell that she's no, not, you're not fine. not fine at all. Mm-hmm. But if she's saying she's fine... Now, whilst we're sitting I there... I just respond, good to hear. <laughs> yeah. Glad you're good, babe. Yep, yeah, that sounds know, good. See, you're the guy, the path of least resistance. You said you were fine. I don't know why we're getting divorced. I don't understand what happened here. You, you know. said you were fine every time. If you're not fine, say you're not fine. Yeah, that's not going to happen. Um, I don't need to play these silly games. Yeah. Now, I yep, will say no problem. this. I will say this to her, because, again, you know... If you're so in tune and know that he's mad, how about you take a look and step back further, miss, and ask yourself, wow, he doesn't sound happy about this. Why could that be? And if you widen back and go, oh, wait, he's worked all day or he sounds really tired. Oh, he was watching his favorite thing. I just interrupted him. Then you could ask yourself, did I need him to go to the garage right now or could I have waited? Or could I have said to him, hey, honey. I know you're busy with the game. Is there a chance at some point you can go to the garage, but not right now because I want you to hang and stay with the game? That's different. Yep. No problem, babe. Yeah. See, that's how you get a better no problem. You sounded a little more peppy in that one. Yeah, you did. Well, because I get to finish watching the game. (laughs) It's really as simple as that. The trouble is, is that we don't have these kind of skills. And I mean, unless you're like me and you go to therapy for four skillion years, where are you going to get these skills? The internet. YouTube. YouTube? Yes. Well, look what it's done for Vicky. She's been on YouTube forever and she's still Vicky. Yeah. She can change a flat tire now, though. 
No, all right, there. You know, I'm going to call right. you, Vicky, because well, I'm always afraid of my car breaking down. You're okay. getting the call, Vicky. We have another text. All right, what do we got? What's going on? And it's on? another one from Vicky and Sarah. All right, here we go. A little bit different. Yes. How do I get my girlfriend to want to do a threesome? Yeah! We're pretty open sexually in our conversation. She knows that's my ultimate kink that I have yet to fulfill. And I want to experiment with her and another female. I told her I'm okay with trying out with another guy, too. But she still feels unsure about both. Any suggestions on how I can make this happen? Yeah, you are a douche. Yeah. You need to leave the relationship. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I'm not Vicky or something. No, but that's kind of no, along sorry, the lines. No, sorry. You sound different. <laughs> what I was gonna say like if this is something that she's like maybe not right now down the line then sure bring it up again be like hey how are you feeling about it now but the fact that she's unsure when it's whether it's a her thing she doesn't want to be with another person or another female or you know she just feels uncomfortable with the idea of like sharing you why are you pushing it if that's not her thing break up with her and then go fulfill your fantasy elsewhere that is the whole idea of being in a relationship you may not get to do those things that you had maybe planned on but this is better because you're with somebody you love i don't know why you're in a relationship yeah i I mean really why are you in a committed relationship if in fact this is what you want to do yeah I mean, yeah. I, I mean, yeah, unless she's not you, feeling it. I mean, you can't force something like that onto it. You should just jump into a polyamorous situation right away. I mean, I, that's really what you got to do because I bet she got into it thinking this was a monogamous relationship. Well, it sounds like she may have like thought about it before, uh, and maybe down the road, fantasies are not. The you know, same depending on like how long they've been together, and you know if they're really committed or this, that, or the other, they might eventually at some point. But it sounds like he wants to speed up the process. Here's a tip. You ready? This is a tip for every human being on the planet. Okay, I know when you want something really bad, and then you ask somebody if they would like it. You can tell if somebody really likes something. You ready? I'm going to ask Vicky and Sarah something right now and ask them. If hey, ask guys. Them for a threesome, I'm leaving the room. Oh. Same. I'm not going to ask them for a threesome. Okay. I'm just, That's I'm totally. Just. I, it would only be you and Danny I'd ask that, okay? Oh. I would never ask that. Oh, then the answer is, yeah. yep, no problem. <laughs> um, but here we go. Here, here's, here's what you can tell, and I'm going to ask these. Hey, Vicky, Sarah, would you guys like a million dollars someday? Yeah, yeah. of course. Absolutely. See how quick that was? When you don't get that kind of an answer to your question from anybody, that means they don't want to do it. That right? It's pretty simple. But now we know why sometimes he dips under seventeen million. He's just handing out millions handing of dollars money. to prove points. <laughs> Would you like a million to have a threesome with me? And I got news for you. I never got an answer to that question ever in my life. It's but I mean, people in conversation say things they really don't want to follow through with. Like, but you, you can know? tell in their voice, just like the garage guy. Yep, I'll go. I mean, you know what? You can tell when someone doesn't want to do something. Well, and I feel like if she does eventually change her mind and really want it to happen. And she'll come to you when she's ready. It ain't happening, Sarah. That's okay. That, I don't know. Giving it up. He said, "I'm even willing to do it with a dude just so I could get this." I honestly, I honestly don't know. I mean, I'm definitely more of the jealous type. I'm a, I'm a jealous female. I will admit, but I would like to someday, hopefully, get comfortable enough and a little less what? jealous Why? to eventually. I don't know. Maybe Why? I, th- I think it'd be so hot. To eventually have a threesome? Yeah. Whose kid are you? I think, I mean, right now, no, I don't mine, think I would, like, if Does Johnny J-Rubs, Roberts want this? Oh, my gosh. With another female? Absolutely. Are you sure? <laughs> Has he said it? Are you sure? Has he actually asked for that? Well, I mean, I know he has said that, like, if I was to hook up with another girl, he would be more than down to watch. We haven't actually but brought... I hope, I hope it is, he, is, is he okay with you saying that? ...brought him into the scenario, because uh, that would be the whole uh-huh. thing, is, like, I think two girls and my guy, but they wouldn't actually do anything, is way diff- is way different than the full... The full what are they, the, just there with, like, giant feathers, just keeping him cool? Yeah. <laughs> They're feeding him a sandwich, actually. Okay, I am for that. <laughs> but uh, so, I mean, I, I do think, like, you are you have to make sure you're you're confident in your relationship. And then that might go somewhere. There's, you cannot prepare for that. Even if you think you can prepare for that, until you actually see it happen in front of you, you will never know what that feels like. Right, right. And then and you'll be like, it's too late. Now I don't know why I did this. Both would you people do this have at dad's house or would you not do it at dad's house? That's I mean, if dad's out of town. Why don't you bring that up? Sure. No, it's not going to happen I got my own dad's bed. House. We're not going to have a menage. There's a few couches. No, no, you know what? That is, no. I was just curious. If you were, do it on the artificial grass because I can spray that down. <laughs> Okay, that's a, but not, well, not in the woman neighbors. that you think they're bringing in. Uh, it's probably somebody from the forest. Somebody who doesn't, I mean, some, some wild, feral, that's, yellow jackets woman. That's the only person that would do something like that. They're looking for Bigfoot. Yeah. 
<laughs> you know what? How'd you know my type? Wow. Yeah, I was yeah. going to say, it's been a long winter. I haven't shaved. So who would you, <laughs> what do you want? Do you want a Misty? Do you want a tie, Sarah? What kind of woman do you want in this relationship? Do you want a Shauna? Who I'll do you take, want from Yellow Jackets? I'll take any of them, really. All right, because I mean, you got to be careful because you could end up eating, shot. I mean, you know, you never know with that show. It'd be worth it. Yeah, okay. I, 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 okay. But anyway, have her come to you when she's ready. She's not ready. I'll bet anybody well, on the show right, right now. now. How much money? I'll bet you guys cash. There's no way she wants this ever in her life. Yeah, Vicky's with me on this. You know how bad that is because she hates to agree with me yeah, on everything. I do. Yeah. I, don't, I don't think she's down for she's it. She's totally not down for it. Sarah's I think just, she mm. might be in the future. Oh, you're mm-hmm. high. God, spend, get, give me some cash, girl. I want some of that money back I gave you. What do you got? <laughs> Let's make a bet. Maybe they'll text in and say they did it. Okay. In a, years. What's okay. the time? Do we have a year on this? Two years? What do we got? Uh, until, until the Mariners win the World Series. Oh, oh we got God. a lifetime then. All I'm right. Let's make that. this bet. <laughs> Jesus, Steve, thanks for that. That bet will never see fruition. Yeah, sometimes the timing of a certain text comes in and you're just like, this is the worst time to have this text come in on my, I got a text from the pest people, but if you read it real quick, it just says, I just want to let you know, I'm in your yard doing your service. So I'm like, ah. what's up? Context. Yeah, I'm sure. Kind of the pest people. Yeah. Ooh, wow. In yeah. your yard doing your service. Uh, the pool boys in the yard doing a service. Yeah, but we don't have a pool, honey. I don't. Um, okay, well, if, that's, if you say so. Oh, it must be a different person's yard then. Okay, so that's a problem that this guy has. But how about this? I, oh, my God. I would lose my effing mind if one of my kids did this. A teenager? just drained his family's life savings of $64,000. How? Oh, I'll tell you how. At 747 on The Rock. Today's podcast was brought to you by Travis Gagne, bankruptcy attorney. He's here right now and has agreed to answer more of your questions about bankruptcy. Travis, if you're upside down in your mortgage, should you continue to make the payment? Continuing to pay your mortgage or not is a complex decision because you're going to have to pay to live somewhere. You're going to have a housing payment. So continuing to make your house payment really depends on several factors. One is whether or not you have a second mortgage. Um, The second one is how affordable your ongoing monthly mortgage payment is. Uh, Another uh, issue is whether your mortgage is adjustable and you're facing an increase in your mortgage payments later on when interest rates go up. If you do have a second mortgage in this economy with the housing prices being down, oftentimes we can re- we can take off or strip off that second mortgage in a Chapter 13 case so that you'd only have the first mortgage to continue to pay. Thanks, Travis. If you have more questions about bankruptcy, you can reach out to Travis anytime at ChooseTheRightChapter.com. That's ChooseTheRightChapter.com. And thanks for listening. This episode is brought to you by Southern Company. Southern Company is making energy clean, smart, and sustainable for their 9 million customers across the country. Southern Company, building the future of energy. Learn more at southerncompany.com slash future. Are you dealing with a personal injury? Don't go it alone. Turn to the experienced team at Phillips Law Firm. Their attorneys have helped thousands of clients get the compensation they deserve. Call Phillips Law Firm now. Call 1-800-JUSTICE or visit justiceforyou.com. Hello, I'm actor and small business owner Ty Burrell, and I'm going to tell you how Innovation Refund's network of independent tax attorneys help eligible small businesses file for the ERC. Also, they're letting me play with the soundboard, and I love it. They analyze and interpret ERC claims to help businesses get the refund amounts they may qualify for. Go to innovationrefunds.com or call 1-843-REFUNDS. Innovation Refunds does not provide tax or legal advice. We work with an independent network of tax professionals to evaluate and process your claims. Terms and conditions apply. Ty is a paid spokesman. Hey, this is BJ. Thanks for listening to our show's podcast. If you're a fan of all things geeky, you should check out my other podcast, BJ Shea's Geek Nation. We have new episodes every day, and you can check it out at bjgeeknation.com. Your driver's license is important so you can get back and forth to work, get your kids to school, and back and forth to daycare. If your license has been suspended because you can't pay your tickets, you can't do any of those things. Let's talk about Chapter 13 bankruptcy. You may have heard the tickets cannot be discharged, but they can be dealt with in a Chapter 13 case. Why not come in for a free consultation? The chapter you choose will make all the difference to your getting back legally on the road. Let's design a plan to pay off your tickets and restore your license immediately. I'm attorney Travis Gagne. Please contact me today at ChooseTheRightChapter.com. That's ChooseTheRightChapter.com. 99.9 KISW, The Rock of Seattle. Big, big news, man. Guns N' Roses is going to be a Climate Pledge Arena on October 14th. And the news gets even bigger as Tool will be coming just six days later to the Tacoma Dome. Ooh, good week. Woo! We want to send you to both of those shows. We would love it if you're like, oh my gosh, I got uh, two tickets to Paradise, which has nothing to do with either band. But 
If you listen this week between 6 a.m. and 10 p.m., you will get the code word. Then once you get that code word, text it to 206-803-7625. That's how you get a chance to win these tickets to both shows. Not just one, both. All right, Steve, you ready for the code word? I am. Well, hush. Now I got to get the code word going. You ready? Well, then hush. Okay. You're supposed to do a who's on? No. Yeah. Hush. That's on first? The, yeah, nah, he rang. Yeah. Hush is the code word. Okay. See? The Tula song. Yeah. Hush. Hush. That is the code word. Hush. 206-803-7625. Text the code word hush right now for your chance to win tickets to Guns N' Roses and also the Tool Show. Now, if you're a person that says, I got money. I don't need you people. All right. Well, tickets to both these shows go on sale today at Who's 10 a.m. back? I've got money. Screw you guys. You know how Danny is. I don't want free stuff. You know Danny. Danny likes to flex. Yeah. You know, so there are people like that. But yeah, hush is the code word. And if you want to buy tickets on sale today at 10 a.m., more info at KISW.com. Oh, yeah, it's me. All right. Uh, Vicky, would you change that word, by the way, on that thing? Uh, let's go to a teen in China. Uh, there was a teen. Oh, man, this kid. I think this kid's got to be grounded forever. Okay. She drained her family's life savings on video games, buying $64,000 worth of pay-to-play mobile entertainment. Wow. Now, I'm going to tell you this. This is also on the mom, because I don't know how you don't monitor your bank account on some regular basis to see this happening. Because the mom says, I had no idea that my 13-year-old daughter was charging her debit card. Uh, but she ended up receiving a phone call from the school of all places. Well, I don't know how they got involved, but Unless they did. Unless she was like bragging to her friends. And then the, the, some of the school finds out. I was like, we should probably let mom know. Yeah, they did. Yeah. She goes and checks the bank account. It's at seven cents. Oh, my God. 64 grand gone. I can't imagine you get that back. I mean, I, yeah. you know, I don't think the video game people are like, oh, sorry to hear that. What an awful accident. Here's your $64,000 back. So for f- for about five months, from January to May, okay, the mom is not worse. Yeah, the mom's not checking her account because it, it, it took her uh, an estimated of, she spent an estimated of 16800 bucks on game accounts and nearly 30000 on in-game purchases. See, I don't know any of these pay-to-play games. But that sounds... Every app is like that. I know, I know. Every single one. And I don't one. play them for that reason. Because yeah. like once I start playing something, like, oh, in order to do better, you have to unlock it by buying coins. And that coin is like $50 or whatever. Like, uh, how many damn things are you purchasing that end up being $64,000 worth? The in-game purchases, I should, like, I'm, I'm telling you, Steve, you get hooked on a game or two, mm-hmm. 30000 bucks on just trying... Because, you, you know, you obviously have an opportunity to play the game better if you get better stuff. That's how they hook you, the bastards. You know how many goalie pads I could buy for that kind of money? I think you probably would have if you had this kind of That's brain true. set when yeah. you were that, that age. The daughter claims she wasn't aware where the money came from or the tab that she racked up. She just knew that her mom's bank account was linked to her cell phone. Oh, okay. God, what? Well, I mean, how was she, what, 13 or so? You're, you're smart yeah, 13. enough to know. No, that's a, that's a good lie. Yeah. Um, however, she deleted transactions and messages to hide the evidence from her parents. Okay. So, uh, of course you knew. I mean, you, how can you say you didn't know when you knew it was coming from somewhere that you hid your tracks, lady? And I was reading something where it's like she was bragging to her friends and they were like getting pissed that's off it. and jealous. So then she was buying stuff for them as well. But I'm going to tell you this. Well, that you know, that's another way. Then you're yeah. a, you're, you're absolutely right. Then if she's basically sharing the the the, the, the credit card info so yep. the other people can charge up money and play games, okay, that's just what a. Oh. But how do you not know how much money's in your account for five months? You know, how do you not check that? I don't check my account very often. Does somebody in your family? Yeah, Tatum, thankfully. Oh, yeah, all right. Yeah. Well, you know, I knew yeah. that kid was going to help you out and be responsible. Three years old. She's been watching a lot of like Paw Patrol finance shows, and it's incredible what she knows. No, my wife, thankfully. Okay. She, she's on that, I think, almost every day. You got to be, especially when you have mobile access. Yeah. You can check any time. There is no, I, I feel like, yeah, the kid's a kid, and the kid's a jerk. But I mean, I'm sorry, January to May. I, you better not get that money back. You have learned a valuable lesson of how just not paying attention to money is going to wreck you. Dude, having to then replenish $64,000, I mean, that's not an easy task. I don't know what to tell you on that one. I don't know what, what you do with how the much are, How much are 13-year-olds being sold for on the black market? Yeah, <laughs> really. Kidding. I mean, at this point, yeah. it's <laughs> Sorry, kid. We're selling into a family that wants Here you, you go. Uh, we're done. That's insane. Yeah. But I do know so many people that just put their head in the sand about money. 
Mm-hmm. They just don't pay attention. And you, you, I got no sympathy. I got no empathy for somebody that just doesn't understand that. I, 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 it's we like, had a laugh with my wife and I when uh, there was a time where the company accidentally gave me more money than they were supposed to. And I had no idea. And I would have not. I probably would have gone to this day where I maybe would have not known. And she was. A, she noticed it right away. She's like, dude, why do we have this much in our account? Like, your company did something. I'm like, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> and she's like, go check the account. I look at her. Oh, wow, that's pretty cool. And she's like, well, what are we going to do about this? I'm like, well, let's first buy some stuff. No, I'm kidding. It was, it was like, but had it not been for her, the company might have been thinking, are you trying to keep that money that we accidentally gave you? And I'd be like, no, I just haven't checked for a couple of weeks. I want to tell you, Steve, uh, our fine company, you can keep it. Yeah? I'll tell you why. Okay, why? Well, one that, of the that, biggest fights. myself because I didn't keep it. One of the biggest fights I ever got into. It was hilarious. I had a giant fight with the financial person of our company. Mm-hmm. They were like, they were telling me what an a-hole I, I mean, it was bad because I told them they overpaid me. Mm. Like you, I said, I'm telling you, I shouldn't have this much money. Yeah. And they started, the guy, the, the very arrogant, and I don't know if this person still works for our company anymore, but I'm like, are you kidding? I had to call Hair Club. I go, dude, I just, I want you to know, I just got into a huge fight with a guy. I know I'm known for this, and the, I, I get it. You're probably going to get a call of what a douche I am, but I would like to tell you why I got into a fight. And Hair Club said, why did you get into a fight? He rolled his eyes. I told him, because you guys overpaid me, and I'm and and he laughed. He said, I will tell you this. If you tell me that I overpaid you, I'm going to believe you because you are that guy. You know every penny. You know where it's all going. Mm-hmm. He laughed his ass off. And he said, you know what? I mean, if the guy was a jerk and you're trying to give us money back, I got your back. Mm. He goes, that is the dumbest thing ever. When a, an employee tells you that you've overpaid them, you at least have to be nice to the employee. The employee's at least trying to do you a solid, and instead you guys get into a major argument. That would have been awesome if he just said, look, you tried. Just keep the money. Yeah, I would. that's why I say, you know, you know, sometimes our company deserves the idiots that they hire at this point. I'll be honest. I did want to be like, can we just, I wish we had like, we could like just create like a, a, a put a little like that money aside into an account where we don't touch it ever just to see how long it takes until they realize that. Like, because there was that part of that curiosity like are they ever going to figure out because it's a substantial amount like it wasn't just like yeah a thousand bucks no it was it was more well more than that it was five figures and i was just like yeah i wanted to just put it away like not spend it but it was like in my head i'm like it'll be a fun game to see but i'm like that no one's gonna believe me when i say that they're gonna just be like you stole the money and i'll be like no no i mean it's just waiting to see i figured i'd wait a year to see if you guys ever figured out if not that i'd be like hey look here's your money but that probably wouldn't go over well so you know what i found because i had a conversation later with uh, somebody in the company one of the big lawyers and you know and there was something else going on and the lawyer said to me that the, the highest paid people in our company don't know how much they have in their accounts. You could literally steal from them because sometimes that happens in big situations where the scammers go after the high income people because they won't notice you taking 100, 200 bucks out of them every month. No, they absolutely. won't ever know because they don't pay attention. That would be me. I would be a terrible millionaire because I would have no idea. I'd be oh, like, I know man. I'm good forever. I'd be paying attention. To er- I mean, that would be my job is to look at my account. I'd oh. be so happy rolling in the skillions. I'd be every day like uh, with, with Uncle McScrooge. What's his name? Uncle Scrooge Mc, McDuck. Whoever. The, yeah, I'd be like Scrooge. Just I'd have that big pile of money. I'd have my phone swim out. Swim in I'd, it. I'd swim in the money. Look at all my accounts. You would never be able to take anything from me that I oh, wouldn't no. know about because I'd always be there looking. I'd just be going wherever I want. If the impulse hit me, I'd purchase something. I, well, I'd be doing that too. And I wouldn't care. Oh, you know? Yeah, you wouldn't care if people stealing. I guess. Well, the way I would you care if they were stealing. I wouldn't know. Yeah. And they would, and they just, yeah, that that that, that just surprises me that people just don't pay attention. And then here you go, sixty four thousand dollars later, your your daughter scammed you out all that cash. So I said, man, I thought I was bad for racking up four hundred dollars of rock band songs on my dad's credit card. At least I had to paint the house when dad found out. Huh. See, that's the thing. The dad found out at four hundred. Four hundred is yeah, that? You he can, found out. You can bounce back from four hundred yeah. relatively quickly. And you keep because he probably caught him. Yeah, he probably was like, "What the heck's going on with my account here?" Because Dad probably took a look. Oh man, how do you have sixty four grand and have no idea what's happening with it? That's just crazy to me. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, now she has a lesson learned. Lesson learned. Hey, there's a you know we've been talking about the Kiss final tour. Yes, and everyone laughs because we just think of all these bands that have said this is it, and it's like, no, this is not it. I believe <laughs> them. Well, I'm a- going to see their last. 
probably last ever show in Seattle. I understand why you want to believe that, because you surely want to believe it's the last one. And uh, Gene Simmons was like uh, in an interview and he's like, I promise. I mean, he's he's saying this is Kiss's final show. The show in December, The that's it. You have to have a little pride and self-respect. Know when to get off the stage. It's Mm -hmm. been half a century. We've been doing this an awfully long time and can't tell you how much it means to us to be in front of the fans and put on the spectacle of all spectacles. But on December the 2nd, New York City, Madison Square Garden, that will be the last time KISS will ever be on stage anywhere. Oh, I'm... That just means that they're not going to play on a stage. <laughs> yeah, see, you're right. Now you're, they'll just play on the start, floor. You're starting to listen the right way. Yeah, yeah, yeah like, look, yeah. we never said we we're going to play on a stage again, and we haven't. We're on a boat. We're going to just cruise. That's not a stage. That's we're, a boat. We're hovering over a stage. We never stepped on the stage. On a side note, I laughed out loud because BJ did his his Gene Simmons impression, yeah. and then he started talking, and I was like, okay, yeah, that was pretty, pretty good one, BJ. Thank you, pretty buddy. close. Thank you very much. Uh, so, gee, so, all right, so... You know, Gene's like a pride and self-respect, which, by the way, I would like to question that. But anyway, uh, he was asked for one word to sum up his feelings about the last concert for Kiss. You know, pride in a half a century of defying the critics, we completely ignored them. So it's going to be happy because of the uh, amazing journey we've had, but sad, of course, because it's going to be heartbreaking. Oh, well, I mean, I guess I can understand that. That actually is a, that's, pretty, that's a good comment. I can't give my hard time for that. I feel like that's like the advice that you should probably give to every band or any artist. Like they did not care about what critics said. If they did, they would not be a band right now. Well, that's just what happens mm-hmm. in life, Steve. Like older people do not like new stuff. This comedian, Matt Strife, it's, it's unbelievable the polarizing effect that this comic has all over Facebook. And granted, I have a lot of older people. So I think that's his name. Matt Rife. Matt yeah, strife. him too. Oh, Matt Strife. Well, he's going through a lot of strife, Matt Rife. Thank you. Thank you, boys. But that's what he's going through right now. Is that, is, These old people don't even know my name. That's true. I don't. I mean, you know, but at least I love the kid. Um, but it, it, it's funny. I have seen some people who are professionals comment about Matt Rife, mm-hmm. and it sounds just like what people used to say about Kiss way back in the day. Look, you're not going to... Okay, it's always funny when there's someone that's out there is like, oh yeah, the critics love me. I'm like, well, does, do the people like yeah? Like that's I mean, the like, key. Like whenever someone's like, I'm the like, I'm a comics comic. I'm like, oh, so you're not funny? Is what you're trying to tell. <laughs> you're not making any money. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. I always love that one. Or like even in the world of wrestling, I see that sometimes. Like, oh yeah, the wrestlers all love me. I'm like, oh okay, well that's not the audience. Like I don't give a crap if other wrestlers think I'm I'm a good wrestler yeah. in the ring. Like if people who paid money are reacting to what I'm doing. That's all that matters. That's why, like, you look at, like, I mean, Kiss and I, I feel like there's, like, almost, like, similarities with Kiss and, like, Nickelback. Not, obviously, Nickelback doesn't wear makeup, but, you know what I mean? They, they are not critically acclaimed, but they're laughing all the way to the bank because they're putting on great shows and putting, putting out music for that audience that does like them. And that's all they care about. Were you around for the Radio Dash Info days of this show? I, 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 I can't. No, I'm aware of that website. I remember, yes. I, I, I was... I was working in radio in this area when that that toxic, as the kids would use as a term, website existed. Yeah, and they just on a daily basis said, this show will never last when Mm -hmm. I first got to town. And look, I also worked in a very... They said it about us when we started doing KSW. I remember that. Yeah, and they said it about the show when we were on the buzz and uh, when they heard we were going from the buzz to a a show. And they didn't know at the time we were getting you, which I said that was our secret weapon. I go, they have no idea we're getting one, I think, one of the best talents in Seattle Morning Radio and we're adding them but to But then they complained show. about that as well. Yeah, well, uh, yeah. <laughs> that's what, just what they do. That's what they do. And there was a bunch of dating, I don't know if you know, radio-info.com was yeah. this website. Basically, all it was was either unemployed yep. or barely employed radio people <laughs> yep. pretending that they didn't work on the radio and going on this like community message board to complain about successful radio shows. Oh, good. And I don't think they're around anymore, are they? No. So we lasted a longer. Of groups I can point it you was, guys yeah. to. It was basically what like yeah. a Facebook group was before Facebook. Gotcha. Yeah, it was a message board. Yeah. Yeah. And we lasted longer than they did. <laughs> Even yeah. though they predicted. I mean, is, it, look, we followed Howard Stern, so they thought these guys are going to suck. Yeah. It's never going to work. And uh, But they said we would never work when we took over the buzz, and then we really had a great run at the buzz. Then we, uh, then, then we, then we put together this great show, adding Steve to the show, which to, to me, I, I just thought there's no way anyone's going to be able to, to stop us. We just have a great show and added another great guy from another great show. This is going to be fantastic. And But yet they were like, yeah, that's not what radio is. Yeah, but I remember Charlie Brown. And I 
they're they bringing all these people who were like 10, 20, 30 years ago. And yes, they were great 10, 20, 30 years ago. I'm not yes, disparaging the, anybody. The guy from Snoopy. He was really yeah. good on the radio. You know, I mean, Robin and Maynard and look, all those shows, they, you know, and you know, Crow and West, they were great shows. That doesn't mean that we weren't also good either. But it was like, because we weren't what it was 20, 30 years ago, we sucked. And it's like, no, you're just getting older and don't appreciate new entertainment, which is really what's happening all the time in the history of entertainment. That's always what people do. And when people within the industry, in any industry, it's typically just rooted in jealousy. They're seeing yeah, you're right about success. that. I mean, I'm, that's Why right. are they successful? Right, like, I'm unemployed. I'd be better at that. Really, yeah, really yeah. would you be? Uh, you know, it's because I think we know oh, what we're I doing. I forgot all about that message board until yeah. right now. That yeah. place was, they every s- once in a while I dip in there God. just to read. Of course, and yeah. it was super entertaining because oh, it was yeah. such vile hatred towards anyone that was on the radio being successful. Oh, they gave me such great material back in the oh, day. Oh, I bet they oh, did. We had so much fun reading their stupidity because I'd always end it with, and these are people that aren't getting paid, and I am. Yes. And, there you go. and I'm like, really I keep reading it going, I want them to be more and more pissed at the fact that every day that this microphone turns on and they hear my stupid voice, they're going to be angrier and angrier. It's yeah. so awesome. I mean, the, 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 we were planting the seeds for social media way before social media. That's why when everyone's like, I'm shocked social media turned into this. I'm like, really? You give an anonymous platform to anyone or just yeah. a platform where someone can just yell and scream and not have to look the person in the face? It's going to eventually turn into that. Oh, yeah. 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 And that, I mean, right now, I mean, I guess, you know, you got, I don't know what it is that you guys haven't seen as much as I have, but I have a lot of old people in my life. They, but the Matt Reif stuff is just insane. How much? Because the kid is ripped. They've been having these T-shirt pictures of him, or no T-shirt pictures, and the dude is like ridiculously ripped. He works out like I mean, and he's got the chiseled face, so he's a model-looking dude who's actually filling out arenas without anybody's help. Well, not arenas, but filling out big clubs without anybody's out, help. So at Pantages Theater in yeah. Tacoma, which is like about a thousand ish, twelve hundred. That's a, that's quite a feat. Made his own YouTube special because Netflix and, and, and Comedy Central, and HBO, or Max now wouldn't give him the time of day. And everybody's essing all over this guy, of course, except the fans that love him. He reminds me of Dane Cook, like Dane yeah. Cook's fandom yeah. of like how he just he was. I mean, because Dane Cook back in the day, he was a good looking guy, take off his shirt, and you know, kind of I, the way I always could describe his comedy as like broy comedy, like mm-hmm. just kind of like f- for the guys. And I feel like Matt Reif kind of does that same kind of thing. But with Dane Cook, he had a huge female audience. Yeah, he, he did. did. And so does Matt feel Reif. Like he was almost like a nickelback of comedians in yeah. a sense. Like he, he attracted the ladies, man. But so does Matt Reif. Yeah, though, ladies like, love Matt Reif. He, they lo- and he, you know, he does such good. But it's it's that's like a, that's what it's reminded me because I I've been a fan of this guy for years, uh-huh. and now that to see him blow up, it's like this is awesome. But Hell so yeah. many people are so upset about it, and I feel like what BJ is saying is, is like I don't look like him. <laughs> It's like, and also probably the comics are out there to doing traditional style comedy because yeah. he doesn't do traditional style comedy. They're probably mad because like, how is he successful? I'm doing it the right way. Yep. And I will, I, I will say this because you're right, Danny. Dane Cook was a phenom, and but Matt Reif hasn't got to that point yet. I mean, where he's filling arenas like Dane he's Cook did. There. But I'm going to say this just from a material standpoint. Apparently, they're charging 300 bucks a ticket according to one person. Yeah, I know he. So, I mean, I, mean that's, I, that's, I think he's, he's doing okay with his wallet. Yeah, because he's doing it himself. He's he, he can afford I, a shirt finally. But I mean. I, <laughs> I, I have watched I, I watched one of his specials. So I watched the full special that he did on his own and I love his material much better than Dane Cook's material. I think Matt really does some clever stuff. And his crowd work is some of the best crowd work I have ever seen in comedy. Now, we have a good buddy of the show, Rich Voss, and I think he was kidding. Rich Voss posted, and he didn't say anything, but he goes, you want to talk about crowd work? Here's the best people that's ever done crowd work. And that's one of the things that Matt Reif always gets credit for is his crowd work. And I don't know if Rich was just kidding so he could promote his new show that's coming out. He probably gotcha. usually does. But I still, and I've, been, I've, I've watched comedians, I've watched great crowd work before. Matt Reif is brilliant. I don't know how the hell he, how he's his quick as he is, but it's like he never has a fail interacting with the crowd, which almost every comedian, it doesn't always work 100% of the time. It's sure. like, you know, every once in a while there's a dud, but it's he's like... it's like 27 years old. Only, yeah. I know, he's been doing comedy since he's 15. His last special was so brilliantly done because he starts it off talking about his grandfather and it's a real awesome, real sex type thing, and then the way he ends the special brings a tear to your eye. And I'm like, this kid is brilliant. He is amazingly brilliant. Every emotion is covered, but you can see how he put together the show. And, and I don't want to spoil it for people, obviously, but you can watch it on YouTube. It's free. Um, I'm like, 
I have to applaud this kid. It's like there's nothing he's doing wrong, and he's in great shape, and he's a good looking dude, and all the women love him. It's like you, you, you just have to bow to this guy. You have to. Okay. I mean, you're real. You, I mean, it's a comic. Give him a high five. I'm not going to yeah. bow to him. <laughs> well, I look at how Kiss. You had to bow to Kiss. If you were anybody that was anybody, it's about time you recognize the greatness that is Kiss. And I, and I, mean, I hate the. I, I mean, I don't say hate Kiss, but I'm not a fan. But I have to recognize what they did. They revolutionized and changed. Rock and how to do a show. I mean, they did. And, they, yeah, they, and while they, everyone's criticizing them, they're selling out arenas. Yeah, and they, they, people are loving them. So and I've been doing it for half of a century, which made me I'm like, no. And then you realize, yeah, they probably haven't been a band for about fifty years. And it's proud and heartbreaking. <laughs> that last show is going to be bonkers. Okay. It's in New York. I hope it is. It's got to be. I hope it is, Steve, because you know, I mean, they are old. I mean, I hope they really can, you know, get get it up there. Oh, it's going to well. It's going to be great. They're going to get it up, oh, man. They're going to. Okay, and you're going to you're wanting it to be good. So I mean, I mean, unless they literally just get wheeled out or something, you don't have walkers. You'll probably will enjoy the show. All right. Well, uh, there's this guy. Who bought a chair off Facebook? Uh, he got it off Facebook Marketplace. Got this chair for fifty bucks, and ended it up auctioning this chair off for eighty five thousand dollars. I'll tell you all about this at eight seventeen on the Rock. BJ and Migs mornings on the Rock ninety nine point nine KISW. They called him the most powerful man in Hollywood, and he really was for decades. He extended his tentacles like an octopus throughout the entire entertainment industry. Mr. Lou Wasson. This is Glitter and Might, an Odyssey Originals documentary podcast series written and narrated by me, Sean Levy. All episodes are available on the Odyssey app or wherever you get your podcasts. We all have tasks we'd like to avoid, like mailing and shipping. It takes time lugging all those letters and packages to the post office. That's why you should try Stamps.com. For 25 years, Stamps.com has made mailing and shipping easy. You get all the services of the post office right on your computer, anytime. No traffic, no waiting, no hassle. Plus, you save money with discounts up to 84% on USPS and UPS. With Stamps.com, all you need is a computer and printer. Print stamps print shipping labels, and if you sell products online, Stamps.com connects with every major marketplace and shopping cart, so you can spend less time on shipping and more time on your business. Get started with Stamps.com today. Sign up with promo code PROGRAM for a special offer that includes a four-week trial, plus postage and a digital scale. Just go to Stamps.com and enter code PROGRAM. 99.9 99.9 KISW, The Rock of Seattle. I want to hope that this person we're about to talk about is like just one of those bargain hunter per- Like they're always going everywhere looking for great deals. Okay. As opposed to, I just accidentally bought this chair on Facebook Marketplace for only $50. And then I put it on auction and sold it for eighty five grand. If that was his first time oh. doing something like this, I, I'm very angry. I want to think at least he works at this and, and knows values and okay. garage sales and yard so sales and stuff. He found a chair for fifty bucks and was able to resell it for eighty five thousand. Yeah, it was a rare high back wing chair from nineteen thirty one. And oh, I bet he must have been like, "This is worth more than fifty bucks." Maybe not thinking it was worth eighty five grand. Here is a video of Justin that he posted on his Instagram of the chair being auctioned off for eighty five. It's the morning of the auction. My chair is the next lot. I can't wait to see how much it goes for. If you're new here, I'm Justin, and I bought a chair off of Facebook Marketplace for $50 in February. And today, in like one minute, it goes to auction. 24, say 26. 22, 28. Back down 30. On the telephone. Would you say 32? 70,000 here. For a dumb chair. I'll take 80 if you like. Last chance. At 85, it's yours. 85,000. That's insane. Wow. Do you tell the person you bought it from, hey, thanks for that $50 chair? I don't, I don't, I don't know. No, How could you? Me. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. But then again, it's all over Facebook. Like this guy, we're talking about it, which mm-hmm. means there's a chance the person who did sell the chair on the marketplace is like, oh my God. Would you feel horrible if it got back to you that you had something like that and had no clue? I'd feel so horrible. Like, what a dope I am. Yeah, there'd be a moment I look in the mirror probably that night and just go, I am such an idiot. But then also I'm like, what the hell? How am I supposed to know that? I'm not a, I'm not a collector of these things. I just needed it out of my house. 
And at the time, had you not known about that, you probably thought, sweet, I got 50 bucks for this thing. That's where I, I, boy, I know that the hunters are hunters. And I get that that's what they do. But I feel like, man, you are taking advantage of somebody's ignorance. And I don't know, man, I I feel like, I, I just feel like, don't you, don't you feel like you should give something to that person? What's that? I don't know. You feel you should give something to that person? No. Yeah, yeah, $50. Yeah. So you two are different than me. I, well, I, was, I, I on maybe, the flip side, that person's probably thinking, "What a sucker! You just spent fifty dollars for this crappy ass chair." They might be thinking that. They I, probably are. Yeah. I. I, I mean, maybe I'm going to tell myself that as I have eighty five thousand dollars now in my bank account. Dude, I don't even like. I don't like to like do any of this stuff. I just want to give my stuff away because it's like you said, same reason. I just want to get it out of the house. Yeah. And I'm like really afraid about some of the things that I'm thinking of getting rid of because I'm like I have no idea and I don't have the desire to try to find out what anything's worth. I mean, there's uh-huh. there's a really cool feature for if you have like the Google app, which I may or may not spend hours doing at the Goodwill, but you can take a picture of something and it automatically will search the web for it. Yeah. Oh, so that's really? How, on my, just on, on Google? Yep, if you have the Google app. So I'll go into the thrift store. I'm like, that looks like it's kind of fancy. Maybe it's an antique. And then I'll take a picture of it, and it'll either find ones exactly like it, if there's any there, and I can look for listings. And I'm like, oh, they're selling it for 50 bucks. Not worth buying it for $10. I don't feel like selling it. But if it was something worth $5,000, sure. But a lot of people do that. I've Technology, seeing, man. I see a lot of people doing the same thing at thrift stores now. And that's why thrift store prices right now have gone up. Oh, they've gotten they, more expensive because oh, more people are kind of figuring things out. Uh, I'll see technology. Everybody's see? catching up. See, everyone's taking advantage of each other in these th- situations. Yeah. So whatever. Yeah. <laughs> I love that I you feel. and Danny are just like too freaking bad. Well, because I mean, there's a very good chance. Well, there's also a chance maybe this guy thought, "Oh, there, this is definitely worth 50, more than fifty bucks. I bet I could get like five hundred. You know what I mean? Well, I get that whatever the guy thought, but then when he got eighty five, that's what I'm thinking. Man, don't you feel like you just, hey, just, hey, I was able to sell this chair for a lot more. Here's, I don't know, five grand or something, ten grand. Have a great time. Five grand? Well, but you got 85. Now you you still have 80. 80. Hell no. No way. You got 50 bucks, and you probably thought you got a good deal out of that. Yeah, I'll send him a message saying thanks again. I uh, uh, honestly, I would say nothing. I, um, and if they come and track me down, I'm like, dude, I just saw you sold my chair for eighty five thousand dollars. I'm like, yeah, I did. Yeah. And they're like, wait, I only sold that for you for fifty. I'm like, that was your decision. Yep. Okay, I, I, I rest my case. Here's with the two of you. I don't even have to. I don't even have to have a rebuttal. I just rest my case. <laughs> what is the case? That we're smart with our money, and you're not. If that's what you want the case to be, yes, yes. <laughs> if that that's the case. Both we of work, you. We worked out a deal. You don't and have to keep going. I rest my case. Yeah. I don't know what your your case is, <laughs> but I just want to make it. You will know the case. I wanted to make it abundantly clear. Yes, that I I paid what you wanted from me, Your Honor. I rest my case. It was like one time I remember buying a drum set on eBay. Oh, here we go. And no, by the way, you're not letting this die, no. even though the case has been rested. No, no, it's not. Uh, I want to. I want to dwell on it. Uh, All right, that's okay. Kidding. That's fine. But I just thought it was so funny because I, I I deal with this guy. I pay what he wants me to pay, and then he comes back to me, and I paid the shipping, which was a ridiculous amount of money. But it was like I'm shipping a drum set. I get it. And so I pay everything that he said, and then he comes back and goes. Actually, it's going to cost me more to ship it, so I'm going to need more money from you. And I'm like, that's not my problem anymore. You agreed on what I was going to give you for shipping. Like, it, I, I'm giving you like a hundred and something dollars for shipping. Like, if you need more than that, that you should have done the research ahead of time yep. to figure that out. Would you have taken a complete refund if he's like, I don't like it. It's not a good deal. I'm just going to give you your money back. How would you feel about that? Yeah. Oh, okay. I think that's what he should have done. Yeah, I would have done that. I've given him a bad review on eBay, though. I think that's fair as well. Yeah. Like, look, man, he he you know he came back on a deal and. Dude, this is, I mean, look, granted, on a much bigger scale, this happened to uh, my buddy Berkey, who does these great board game tables on Kickstarter. Berkey? Oh, yeah. That's a great name. Yeah. (laughs) Oh, dude, he looks like Santa Claus, too. The guy's a great guy. Uh, Vicky, you met him, right, when we went to the convention, I think, and you might have. Um, So Berkey, you know, like a lot of people in the world with all the pandemic and everything, when they do Kickstarter, they had shipping fees and they knew what everything Mm -hmm. was going to cost. And then the shipping fees tripled. Like between the time that he did the Kickstarter and then, of course, the time he had to fulfill. He had to eat all of that. He had the same problem. Yeah. It was, and, and really, if you're a reasonable person, you realize, well, if the shipping tripled, 
Well, that's got to cut into his profits. I mean, he's probably going to take a beating, and maybe mm-hmm. his company might even go under. Luckily, Berkey was the kind of guy that he ran such an industry that he really prepared for any rainy day possible. But then he offered a tip jar. He said, look, I want to let you know what's going on. And he goes, I didn't even want to tell you this, but a lot of people in my life said, dude, you really should let people know what the hell you've been through. Yeah. And he put a tip jar out there and said, here's what's going on. I me I said I gotta help the guy out because it's true. I mean, triple the tri- the shipping charges. I think that you know in your in your buddy's case, he yeah, wasn't my buddy. He was a random person on eBay. That's what I mean to say. Yeah, that. yeah I should say that. You know, it's reasonable, but at the same time, it's also reasonable if somebody wanted to say I don't want to pay that. That's way too much. And 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 I and Berkey was the kind of guy going, look, here's what it is. If you have to do a refund, I completely understand. Mm-hmm. But here's our thing. But he said, no, I'm not going to do anything. I'm just going to I'm going to give them what I said. And, and like and also in this situation, like. I paid X amount of dollars. It was like twenty dollars more shipping. Like it wasn't like I'm not talking like it was like hundreds of dollars or more. I'm like I already gave you several hundred dollars for this drum set, and I also gave you over a hundred bucks for the shipping. You're not getting any more money out of me. We made an agreement. Yeah, it's a tough one. I mean, but I think that the only oh, the only option he had because Steve, I, I hate to agree with you, but it's like you're right. This was the deal we made. This is what oh. happened. Uh, he, he should just go like you know what? I'm giving you a refund of your money. I, I don't want to sell this to you. Which yeah, he I think that's the only option he had. Yep. yep. Here's the problem. He really wanted to get rid of it and wanted to, the, some kind of money. And also, he probably was thinking, this idiot's paying X amount of dollars for this drum set. That's not even really worth that. And I think I, you're I, right. I, I definitely overpaid I'm, you know, because yeah. I wanted this specific black Ludwig drum set. Yeah. And it was a little bit more than I wanted to spend. Not like, it was like still under 1000 bucks, but it wasn't, it wasn't in the best condition. And I was still happy I got it, but... Yeah, so I think, uh, I don't know if that helps your case or not with the judge. I'm not sure. With all of this, it's a great story. Might make you look better, but I still rest my case. Hey, that's fine. (laughs) Well, they're happy I got that $50. I'm happy I got that $85,000. If you're fine, just know this. Don't be upset when you hear this. How am I going to get arrested? (laughs) (laughs) What? How does someone get arrested for this? I just feel like, you know, you know you, you're, you're starting what I believe is the mindset of a white-collar criminal. Hell and it no. Just ex- it, it'll, can you and Danny will be partners. You will get nah, busted in some inner... It'll happen. I'm willing to bet BJ would go to jail before either of us. Absolutely. Oh, please. You, you're a, you are nothing I'll but a vandal. When you you are a to, vandal. When, when you, you get to jail first. Yeah, Danny exactly. is a vandal. The guy literally went around well, town and wrecked the crap. vandals. He's not a... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, if anyone's going to jail, but out of the three of us, it's Danny V. Nope. Oh, yeah. You are totally going to jail. How are we white-collar criminals for agreeing <laughs> By upon... Way, I don't know what's happened, but I have definitely found a button, <laughs> and I love this. I, I really... I am I so excited. I am the, I'm going to be... The more vague I can be, the more it's going to piss you Why would I go off. to jail for having an agreement with somebody? I only have one answer to that. You sound like a child like that just says something random just to piss you off. Like you're not even making any sense, PJ. I love that and I hope that irritates you as oh, well. I you know and by the way, there. and Vicky, I rest my case. So it says hearing your answers on the selling of the chair and how you'd handle the situation tells me a lot about you as individuals. Yes. <laughs> I rest my case, Your Honor. <laughs> Look at me, like, even Vicky's involved now. I don't yeah. want to be associated with criminals. Then go away. How are you going to jail? That's what I want. You want to, how you're going to jail? Yeah. The hard way. Well, <laughs> That's how you're going to go. You're going to do hard time. All right, yesterday, <clears throat> white collar criminal Steve got this one right. What was the first soft drink to be consumed in outer space? I'm going to go Coca Cola. You are correct. <laughs> Yeah, criminals don't answer that. I guess. <laughs> oh, they don't. Yeah. That's right. You want a shot at beating Steve? You got a 206 803 Rock. We're playing B Mays. Going to do that at 847 on The Rock. Today's podcast was brought to you by Travis Gagne, bankruptcy attorney. He's here right now and has agreed to answer more of your questions about bankruptcy. Here's a question from a listener. Uh, my house is currently in foreclosure. I've stopped making payments. What can I do to save my house? If you're already in foreclosure behind on your mortgage, you can stop the foreclosure by filing a bankruptcy. There's different types of bankruptcy. Chapter 13 can help you catch up on your house payments if you're behind. It would mean that you'd have to start making your house payments again and catch up on the amount that you're behind over five years. 
You could also take off or strip off your second mortgage, which would help you to reduce your housing payment every month, especially once you're done with the plan and done catching up on your first mortgage. We could also try to buy you some time in the more in the in by filing a Chapter 13 case. Filing a Chapter 13 would definitely stop your foreclosure. Thanks, Travis. If you have more questions about bankruptcy, you can reach out to Travis anytime at choosetherightchapter.com. That's choosetherightchapter.com. And thanks for listening. So I just got the State Farm Personal Price Plan on my car insurance. So you told your agent you play the bagpipes for your dog? <laughs> What? No, I didn't get that. Personal, my agent just helped me create an affordable price just for me. Okay, let me show you what I've been working on. Hey, Buster! Call State Farm agent Sierra Belleville in Bellingham today. Prices vary by state. Options selected by customer. Availability and eligibility may vary. Have you or a loved one been injured in an accident? Are you struggling to recover fair compensation? Look no further. At Phillips Law Firm, the experienced personal injury attorneys will fight for your rights and get you the justice and compensation you deserve. They handle a wide range of cases, including car accidents, slip and falls, medical malpractice, and workplace injuries. Justice is a phone call away, so don't wait. Call today for a free case review. Call 1-800-JUSTICE or visit justiceforyou.com. Hello, I'm actor and small business owner Ty Burrell, and I'm going to tell you how Innovation Refund's network of independent tax attorneys help eligible small businesses file for the ERC. Also, they're letting me play with the soundboard, and I love it. They analyze and interpret ERC claims to help businesses get the refund amounts they may qualify for. Go to innovationrefunds.com or call 1-843-REFUNDS. Innovation Refunds does not provide tax or legal advice. We work with an independent network of tax professionals to evaluate and process your claims. Terms and conditions apply. Ty is a paid spokesman. Hey, this is BJ. Thanks for listening to our show's podcast. If you're a fan of all things geeky, you should check out my other podcast, BJ Shea's Geek Nation. We have new episodes every day, and you can check it out at bjgeeknation.com. Your home is going into foreclosure and you feel like a financial wreck you don't know where to turn for accurate information i'm bankruptcy attorney travis gagne let's talk about some legal options if we work quickly we can propose a plan to save your home modify the loan or in many cases even eliminate your second mortgage the consultation is free i've helped hundreds of people just like you make informed decisions about whether to save their home or exit it on a reasonable organized timeline the chapter you choose sets the tone for the next chapter of your life Please contact me today at ChooseTheRightChapter.com. That's ChooseTheRightChapter.com. 99.9 KISW, The Rock of Seattle. It's our Loud and Local Band of the Week. And this week, it's Panic Grass. It's our loud and local band of the week, Panic Rash. Want to find out how to get their music? Just go to the BJ and Migs page of KISW.com. I do love that they call themselves Barbecue Metal and Space Rock. Your ass is grass, BJ. Check out their new uh, record, New Miserable Space Ritual. I like what they did there. Okay, so uh, don't forget Sunday nights. If you're, I mean, if, if you really dig bands like Panic Rash, you're going to love Loud and Local. It's a show, Sunday nights at 8 o'clock, two hours of great Pacific Northwest music. Bands like Panic Grass. to be mixed. I know I sure am because we made it. It's Friday. It's Friday. Oh, look, Danny is jumping. Yeah. 
I am definitely um, ready for Friday because I am in my It's Friday I shirt. I saw that. Look at me. <laughs> Where the hell did you get that? I got this actually for Live Day when I was Rebecca Black. Oh, oh that's right. Right? And she's coming to town. Is she? is she? I'm seeing her. I'm going to that. On right. a Friday. On a Friday. Yes. Yeah. Wait, yes. wait. What is Is she singing? It's a Capitol the, Hill yeah. block party, I believe. So, yeah, of so course she's, she's singing. doing magic. Yeah. Oh, I would, I would go see that <laughs> show. Actually, Actually sure. I would as well. Yeah, yeah. Capitol Block Party. Rebecca Black's there on a Friday. That yeah. is ridiculously funny. <laughs> like, I let's would, go. I, I want gonna, all of us to go together. Yeah, yes, I was going to go anyway. And then my friend was like, dude, guess who's coming? And she like circled Rebecca Black. And I was mm-hmm. like, I'm so stoked Not for, for nothing. This. We're probably the only radio. I mean, is anybody playing her song as much as us? No. <laughs> yeah. Granted, it's not her version anymore, but no. Well, not that song. She has other songs that she has since done. That's what I mean. Yeah. But like, we are the, probably the only ones who still play Friday. Yeah, but and, she uh, has to play that song. Oh, but, uh, I bet. I, I bet she starts and finishes with it. I hope so. I hope so. At least twice. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't know. What, I mean, she's coming to the Capitol Block Party. I don't know how big her career is, but the idea is that we probably. I mean, is anybody going to have her on the like on a show? I think ours is the only show they would have her on, just because we do her all the time. Well, not okay. that way. <laughs> Well, wow. wouldn't it be great if she sang now. a special Friday for us? Like for the, you know, what, so we're going to bring her in and have her perform the Friday song now for us? you're talking, yeah. I would love that. I mean, it's not, I'm a, probably the only it's not a horrible one. thing to ask her to do. So she's probably going to do it in concert and watch people to go see her, right? Right. I don't think it's the worst thing for her. Now, for us, I have no idea. No, yeah, I mean, you know, it's like a lot of alcoholics want to hear her perform the <laughs> Friday song on the radio. Well, we'll do a video. Okay. And then, you know, you see her videos. Their videos are pretty amazing. It's going to be one of those videos where her heart's just sitting on a couch? Well, like, what's going on here? <laughs> hey, listen, Hitler, whatever we need to do, Steve, we're trying to, we're trying to get hits. We're trying to get clinks and clicks and links and schlinks. Okay, we're yeah. trying to get ticks and talks over here, buddy. All right. I somehow think she was going to deny this offer if you offer it to whatever. her. Whatever. <laughs> anyway, let's Come on, on, Rebecca. Don't you want our clinks? <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> I do. Let's get to Chrissy from Oak Harbor. Chrissy, are you there? BJ Shay! Who cares? All right, Steve, now get out. Goodbye. For those playing at home, Chrissy has 60 seconds to answer 10 questions. You can pass all you want, but you only get three guesses per question. Are you ready? Let's effing go. Woo! In what movie does Tom Hanks say there's no crying in baseball? Uh, uh, bah, bah, pass. What oh. is the name given to the person rolling the dice in a game of craps? Pass. Oh. In which city would you find Wembley Stadium? Uh, uh, Boston? No. Chicago? No. Oh, I don't know. Pass. According to Google, what is the most popular pie during Thanksgiving? Uh, pumpkin pie? Yes. What is the first name of rapper Little Dicky? Oh, yeah. She's not going to get this. Dean. No. Dick. No. Dick. No. What, what was that last one? Dan. No. Oh, Who did so the Kansas close. City Chiefs defeat in the most recent Super Bowl? Oh, crapper. I can't remember. Oh, uh, boy. Jim Henson combined the words puppet and what to create the name Muppet? Um, muffin. No. <laughs> Milk. No. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's, uh... Okay, Chrissy, you got one correct. She's number one. She's number one. That's better than none. I have to tell you something, hey, I though. I want to say something. Yes? <laughs> so, <laughs> real quick, I'm going to piss BJ off, but that Eric guy that called the other day about the traffic lights, now I look every time I'm at a traffic light for those little tar patterns now. So I found that conversation to be very informative. Yeah. Yeah, Chrissy, I just walked in on whatever you guys were yeah. talking about, but me too. But the, I, you know what? I never said that he wasn't helpful. I said he was going on way too long. <laughs> like, like what she said was like what he first said in the first 20 seconds, yeah. which was very helpful. The rest of it, I was like, dude, we're cutting you off. I don't know if he was helpful. It was just kind of cool now you can see it. Well, yeah. I mean, and I, I agreed with him. But then, you know, he just kept going. He was like, he felt the power and he kept going it's and going. It's something Chrissy will remember forever. You know what? Like Chrissy, luckily. I really wanted to see what he had yeah. to say about, like, red, yellow, and green. Okay. You know what, Chrissy? Why don't you start your own show and have him as your first guest? How's that? <laughs> Okay, Steve, are you ready? Oh, yes. In what movie does Tom Hanks say there's no crying in baseball? That would be a league of their own. Yes. What is the name given to the person rolling the dice in a game of craps? A dealer. No. A roller. No. A a fist guy. No. A fist guy. In which city would you find Wembley Stadium? Uh, London. Yes. According to Google, what is the most popular pie during Thanksgiving? 
I'm going to go pumpkin pie. Yes. Not Sarah's Oreo pie. No. Rude. I know. What is the first name of rapper Lil Dicky? Uh, Dave. Yes. Who did the Kansas City Chiefs defeat in the most recent Super Bowl? Oh, crap. Uh, they beat the Cle- uh, the Cincinnati Bengals. No. Oh. Um, the Philadelphia Eagles. Yes. There we go. Jim Henson combined the words puppet and what to create the name Muppet? Monster. No. Mop. No. <laughs> Mammal. Yeah, no. it's not an easy one. Who was the first Disney princess with a tattoo? Ooh, I'm going to go, is it Pocahontas? Yes. Nice work. What is the current currency in Germany? Yen. No. Euros. Yes. What color <laughs> ball do they typically use in a game of softball? <laughs> a white ball. No. Oh, softball? Green. No. Yellow? Yes. Uh, are you sure it's not yen? I feel like yen <laughs> is the answer. You got seven correct, though, which uh-huh. is a big win. Sorry, seven to one. Chrissy. Seven to one. That was, uh, that was a Mariners game right there, Chrissy. <laughs> oh. Uh, uh, hopefully, Eric, well, do you know what? Can we have Eric call us back and tell us about the red, yellow, green? Is it too late to see That's what a, you call, BJ? I mean, can you promise that you'll be nice to him? Right. Oh, as soon as, well, I'll be nice as soon as he tells us red, yellow, green. And then we'll see also if his body clock knows when to shut up and just say, I'm done. Oh, so you're just trying to train him. Yes. Like you're his Mr. Miyagi of conversation. Yes. <laughs> gotcha. Yes. Okay. I don't think yeah. he's ever going to call back. Sorry. Yes, uh, Eric Son. Uh, so it says, I also look for those sensors now at Streetlights, LOL. Yeah. Eric gave information to so many rockaholics, and you poo pooed him. I, 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 because he, he's got to know when to quit. Because everything he, everyone that loves about what he, that was the first five seconds of his conversation. I have no problem with that. Nobody's saying, "Oh man, that Eric, he just kept going and going and going." Yeah, Greatest well, conversation I've ever heard. Personally. Yeah, do you know why nobody's saying that? Because I cut him off. Oh, That's why. But people could have had more information. There's yeah. no way you get more information. You're, 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 you know what, Steve? Here's what you're doing at a party. I got to go to the bathroom. You were, <laughs> well, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You were, sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You were totally out after that. a lot of water, BJ. Come yeah, on. That's what it is. Does anyone know the name given to the person rolling the dice in a game of craps? Yes. And I, Joey D's definitely knows the He's shooter, right, Joe? Yep. That's right. Yeah. Joey it's D's taught shooter. me. Yeah. And Jim Henson combined the words puppet and what to create the name Muppet? I think. Can you figure it out or do you already know, Danny? I already know, but it's, it's you can also figure it out. It's, well, figure it out if you it's know the first. Puppets. It's only one letter, right? If I'm not mistaken. Yeah. yeah. Which is kind of a tough little co- combination when you go. You, basically, oh. it's up it with an M. Yeah. And Marionette. the M stands for marionette. Yeah. Which is oh. another word for puppet. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Well, that's not true. Well, you know what? Yeah, okay. yeah, a marionette's yeah, marionette very marionette different thing. than a puppet there, oh, Sammy. Okay, whatever. Watch your dirty Unbelievable. Mouth. You know what, <laughs> yeah, Danny? Danny? Apparently, you don't know the difference. I mean, you don't have your hand up a marionette's anything. Yeah, I'm uncultured. You are. Well, congratulations, yeah. Steve, on still beating Chrissy. Good job, Steve. Thank you. A win to win. Oh, it was a big win. Seven to one. Huge win. That was, that was convincing. Oh, I didn't know she only got one. Yeah, oh. that was kind of on her, though. Chrissy was, she well, was having yeah. a great morning. Yeah. Not on the show. <laughs> well, she, she sounded got. happy, so that's cool. Yeah. I, I, I want what's in her coffee or, or whatever she's drinking. And somebody says, hey, they also use white balls in softball. Do they typically, though? What color did you I've say? Only yellow? Played, yellow. I've only played softball with white balls. Really? Well, yeah. this I'm is a tough one. Balls. Did you talk about profi- like like in college? Like with uh, what was the question again? What yeah. color ball do they typically use in a game of softball? Oh, that's a tough one. Typically. I don't. I've yeah. never played a game with yellow balls. Really? Yeah. See, this is the mm-hmm. problem. White balls. I don't follow you, and I, I think the UW women's uh, softball team actually has had a good run, or is still in the middle of a good run. I can't remember, but they've had a good season. Oh, they have, yeah. But I don't know the color of the balls they use in college so- in, in college softball. I don't know. But she didn't say in college softball. She just said softball. It's a tough one. I know. It, it, I, you go either but way. But in competitive play, it says yellow remains the official ball color. Yeah. Yeah. You know, Sarah. Typically, is, yeah, typically but, it's white. Yeah. I don't know. I'm, I, it's. I wish it's you said said Typically, play. it's white. I mean, damn it. <laughs> Not that it matters. You know, yeah, Your Honor. You would have got either I one rest, more correct. I rest she my case. She didn't even get to that. <laughs> you know what? Question. Thanks to Dick Sporting Goods because they have the complete guide to softballs. Yeah. I'm wow. clicking on that link. I can't. You know, it's so. I mean, I've seen college softball, and I don't notice that it's yellow. That's so bizarre. Optic yellow for competitive play, and white for recreational leagues and slow pitch. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Huh. But what's typical, I guess, if you really measure, like what's used most in all softball? Oh, that's a tough one. Well, and my friends on a softball. Team yeah, now and they use of, yellow. They and play it's very slow pitch yeah. and very. But it's competitive. It's hard to Is say. it? <laughs> I mean, it's I pretty sad know. to be honest. Fair. I went to their game and I was like, "Oh, good job, Where's A for effort, at? everyone." Well, congratulations. This is a very bad subject. Yeah, I honestly did not know that there was even like a, a thing. 
So I think this is up, up there with traffic lights yeah. as far as scintillating I, conversations. I do, too, which is why it's time for listeners on the loose. <laughs> That does not involve Steve or Eric's fascinating conversations. Fine. Yes. You can pick the topic, though, and you can guide the show. Call us or text us at 206-803-ROCK. Whatever you want to talk about, we got your calls. We got your texts at 917 on The Rock. BJ and Mix mornings on The Rock. 99.9 KISW. 99.9 KISW. The Rock of Seattle. It's listeners on the loose. Or on the loose. Brought to you by Jersey Mike's, a sub above. All right, here it is, the number. You want to call us? You want to text us? 206-803-ROCK. That's how you get it done, 206-803-ROCK. Now, look, Steve is reasonable. Yes. But he does have one rule. It's a simple rule. Show some energy and bring it. Otherwise, we have to gong you. Say goodbye. Goodbye. Well, I don't know how much time you got left. Anybody on the Heimlich? I'm, I'm, I'm choking on Vicky's popcorn. But uh, I hope that's that's. She's <laughs> trying to kill me. Yeah. What does that even mean? It means uh, that yeah. She gave me popcorn and I'm choking on it. All yeah. right. Again, I feel like. All right. Are we okay with HR? I don't know if yes. it's okay. Right? I hope so. All right. Good. Unless um, like trying to kill one of your employees is a bad thing. Oh no, that's, that's I feel like it's happening. That's in the handbook. Oh, uh, okay. She's trying to take you out like Game of Thrones style. You know, it's usually eat food and you're done. That's uh-huh. how it is. That's yeah. how you get. Tell Steve it was me. Yeah. Yeah, so much, popcorn right. goes down the wrong pipe, man. You're just screwed for the rest of the day. Oh, the whole day it gets you. Okay, not the whole day. You know what I mean. Oh, all right. I'm, I'm sorry. I didn't know what you meant. That's why I asked, but my apologies. Uh, how dare I take your words for what they mean? It's an exaggeration. I don't know what you're exaggerating or not. So what you, so what you mean is for, what, an hour? Yeah, sure. <laughs> okay. In other words, it sucks to have popcorn down yes. there. Yes. 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 That's wow. what you meant. All right. I got to tell you, Danny. Ruins me for the rest of the day. It's over. It's not done. <laughs> I, I can't do it anymore. Hey, uh, 206-803-ROCK. That's the number to call. That's the number to text. Steve's day, unfortunately, has been ruined. By but, you know, he's popcorn. Yeah. See if you can brighten his day up here. All right. Someone said they just got the Snoop Dogg meal at Jack in the Box. And oh. it comes with a purple haze smelling air freshener. <laughs> That's awesome. That's pretty funny. Even though, I mean, the purple haze is more uh, Jimmy, right? But I'll still take it. Is it or, is, or is Snoop known to have purple haze in his brand at all? No, I think it's a Jimmy thing. Okay, cool. I like it. I mean, yeah. It, it, yeah either way, it's a cool thing. I um, I think it's a brilliant idea for Jack. We talked about it yesterday. Should yes. they just go full stoner? I, they kind of are. Yeah, I mean, they're doing I mean, they have the late night munchies, the after midnight meal or whatever it is, the fourth meal. Can you imagine... If oh, Jack the air freshener is that a Snoop Dogg head? Is that the air freshener? Yeah, it looks dog. like it. Oh, with the Jack top, with the Jack hat, with the Jack hat on. Yeah, oh, I love Snoop, dude. I here's what I believe. We talked about it yesterday. I'm going to say it again. Once they federally legalize marijuana, Jack in the Box opens up locations where they one side it's Jack, the other side it's a dispensary. Yeah, dude, I think they would be. I think they would kill. Yeah, and, and, and every other marijuana business would be so bummed because Jack in the Box would rule. Because, like you said, they've already been unofficially the weed place. Oh, unofficially, yeah. that's our idea. We're not saying that's what Jack's all about. Uh, no, no, it's still, I'm looking at that meal, and the only thing that still kind of bothers me is that they force a, a Sprite on you. Yeah. Is that? Uh, yeah, I wonder why. Is that Snoop's favorite drink? Yeah, why is, is that the favorite oh, drink I'm, I'm of Stoner's? his favorite drink that paid him money to probably promote Sprite. I mean, it's a Coca-Cola product. Yeah. So he could have gone any... I got to imagine any, you could have gone whatever Fanta. you want. But they, they, and everything I read, it says it comes with a Sprite. I'm like, I don't want a Sprite. <laughs> <laughs> well... Damn it. It's going to ruin the rest of your day. That would actually yeah. ruin oh, all 24 hours of my day, BJ. Yeah. Yeah. All right, well... Oh, no. someone says per, Snoop has a Purple Haze wrap. He has a, a, a wrap? A rap song called Purple Haze, I guess. Oh, I, I, I wondered about that. Yeah. I, I wonder if, it's, if it's any part of it is sampled or whatever from Jimmy. That's a good question. Yeah, I don't, okay. I, don't, I don't know of many Jimi Hendrix songs that have been sampled. I know it's just a. I mean, you know, Purple Haze is like a big song. To yeah. name one of your songs, Purple Haze, and have it completely different. That's a flex, if you ask me. That's a big flex. Is it? Well, Purple Haze. Don't. I mean, I think that's iconic. The first thing I always think of is Jimmy. Yeah, yeah, but I can see like how like it's a nod. I don't know if it's not. I don't think he's like being like, "Hey, look at me. I'm 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 so ballsy. I'm going to name a song Purple Haze." So you say it's a nod. I say it's a flex. So we'll call it a flawed. Or or a next. Can I have some more of that popcorn? Yeah. yeah. Really? Are your days not completely wrong? You, want, you really want it? All right. 206-803-ROCK. It's listeners on the loose. You pick the topic. You guide the show. Uh, someone said, did I hear it correctly? One of your commercials said that Queens of the Stone Age is coming to town, Climate Pledge Arena on October 4th, and their opening band is called the Viagra Boys, LOL. 
Is that true? Yes. Okay, that is pretty awesome. How amazing is that? So, of course, like, we heard it, too, and both Danny and I are like, Viagra Boys. Apparently, they're a band. Like, I mean, I know that, you know, like, people know of them. I They're not on my radar, and they have a song called Sports that's and? very popular. It's like over f- 5 million views on YouTube. You want to hear it? Yeah. It's pretty awesome, actually. Baseball. Basketball. Okay. I'm in. Wiener Dog. Wiener Dogs. Short shorts. Cigarette. <laughs> well, first board. Ping pong. Rugby ball. Wiener Dog. Skiing. Down on the beach. The video is epic. I love the video. This, this, I'm in. And the lyrics are easy to remember. You see, it just had to go sports. Sports. Yeah, I love this. So many posts on, on YouTube and said, this just sounds like my conversations I would have with my dad. <laughs> yeah. That is, uh, that, and the video is fantastic because he's shirtless. He's all tatted up. And there's a, he's he, standing in the middle of a tennis court while this young woman and old dude are playing tennis, hitting the ball all around him. And he's just like, wiener dog. I mean, and they're I, called I mean, the Viagra Boys. I got to tell you, there needs to be more research done on these guys. That video has 5.6 million views from yeah. four years ago. That's insane. And there's another, they have another one that I want to listen to. I, I don't know if it's clean though, so but it's called Punk Rock Loser. And that has 2.6 million views from a year ago. That's incredible. That's what? It's always funny when you find a band that you're like, like, oh, this is some random obscure band. And like, no, no, I'm just out of the loop. There's a lot of people who are familiar with the Viagra Boys. Yeah. Interesting pairing for Queens of the Stone Age. I'm a, that's the, I, again, I only have that song to go by. No, I think musically it makes all the sense in the world. Yeah. 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 Oh, so you, so you think rock. they... Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. I like it. Yeah. I do like it. All right. The Viagra Boys. Nice. I just would love to have been like the person in the studio watching the engineer or producer who might not be familiar with this band. Maybe I was like, okay, here's your job today. You're working with the Viagra Boys. Okay, what is that? And then there's a guy just going, wiener dog. Yeah. Like, is that a good vocal take? And we're like, we don't know. Is yeah, it? I mean, you know, I think uh, a little Good more, enough? Yeah, a little more cowbell. Otherwise, we're in. I'm all for these guys. I kind of want to see them live. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Danny, maybe later on you can, like, you know, get a sampling of uh, Punk Rock Loser. I would love to hear that. Any bad words in it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Never mind, BJ. Okay. You might have to pull that one up on your own after the show. <laughs> okay, then. Yeah. Sounds like a plan. <laughs> That's funny. 206-803-ROCK. That's the number to call. That's the number to text. It's listeners on the loose. Let's go to Rob on Mercer Island. Rob, you're on the rock. Sports. Oh, hey, BJ. How you doing? Good. Thank you, buddy. What you got? Uh, so I'm a truck driver, and I'm I'm on Mercer Island right now doing delivery, and I was kind of looking for a place to get some food. Is there anything good to eat around here? <laughs> All right. Well, before we give you any information. Rob, you are the best. Before we give you any information, Steve does have a <laughs> payment. Run. Yeah, I was kind of hoping you were going to honk the horn for us. Yeah, I mean, if you want to know. Oh, I can do it. I'm in a residential area. Though. They might not like I don't it. You care about the, the You want to hear the air horn? Yeah. yeah, blame it on BJ Shea. They all know him. Yeah, they do. All right, here you go. There we go. Right. <laughs> You're giving me in trouble for that. Yeah, uh, do, you like, uh, do you like meatballs and pizza and, you know, that kind of stuff? Yeah, I don't know if anything like that's open this early. Yeah, it's nine twenty-five in the morning, BJ. Oh yeah, there's not a lot actually on Mercer yeah, Island. I was say, probably Starbucks, Starbucks, might Starbucks be early McDonald's. What's oh, isn't there a breakfast place? There I, is, and I can't think of the name of it. Einstein's bagels. Einstein's bagels. Delicious. Yeah, I don't know if that's what you're talking about. I'm gonna tell you this right now. If you really want a good diner, though, man, you, if, if you don't mind going to Bellevue, are you stuck on Mercer Island? Because Bellevue's uh, Chase's Pancake Corral is really good. Uh, oh yeah, I can't go back that way because I work at Everett. Oh uh, so yeah. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. Uh, what about Sean's Cafe and Bakery? Yes, sh- thank you. I couldn't think of his name. Sean's Cafe and Bakery is a good joint. I just was blanking on the name. Give that a try. And just look it up on your phone. And uh, that's a good local place that, you know, it, it, it's definitely just only on Mercer Island. And they got good stuff. Oh, okay. That yeah. sounds awesome. Yeah, cool, there thanks, you go. Man. I'll hit it. All hey, right. if you get done eating before, like, you know, 945, call us and let us know how the meal was. Yeah, please do, because I, <laughs> embarrassingly so, I have never been to Sean's. As oh, far, or I can't what remember wrong if I with have. you, man? Well, dude, you know you how it is. You live here and you've never eaten there? Dude, here's the problem. Right? I, I'm here. 
That's you a good know, point. I mean, yeah. I'm here every day, and then on the weekends, oh, you know, true. you sleep in late, and like I said, when you get when you can go anywhere, I mean, we always go to Chase's. I mean, uh, I, I, but you know what? One of these days, I got to get up there and walk over to Sean's. I, I mean, I hear great things about the place. I just, I, you know, I, I I just love Chase's Pancake Corral. It's just a great joint. Nice. Yeah. Uh, by the way, which I every time I go there, it's always because I got to buy Mitch Levy lunch or, or <laughs> breakfast every freaking time. Well, maybe if you were wrong last, you wouldn't have to worry about that. Yeah. It's his favorite place. It, it, it breaks my heart because it's my favorite place. And every time I go, I have this PTSD of giving him a free breakfast. God, I got to change that luck with bitch one of these days. Just All get right. better at your sports predictions. Yeah, that's not going to happen. No. It is listeners on the loose. You pick the topic. You guide the show. What do you want to talk about? Anything you want, man. 206-803-ROCK. More of your calls, more of your texts. We'll take those at 933 on The Rock. BJ and Migs. Mornings on The Rock. 99.9 KISW. They called him the most powerful man in Hollywood, and he really was for decades. He extended his tentacles like an octopus throughout the entire entertainment industry. Mr. Lou Wasson. This is Glitter and Might, an Odyssey Originals documentary podcast series written and narrated by me, Sean Levy. All episodes are available on the Odyssey app or wherever you get your podcasts. So, I just got the State Farm Personal Price Plan on my car insurance. So you told your agent you play the bagpipes for your dog? What? No, I didn't get that. Personal, my agent just helped me create an affordable price just for me. Okay, let me show you what I've been working on. Hey, Buster! Call State Farm agent Sierra Belleville in Bellingham today. Prices vary by state. Options selected by customer. Availability and eligibility may vary. 99.9 99.9 KISW, The Rock of Seattle. It's listeners on the loose. You pick the topic, you guide the show. 206 803 Rock. That's the number to call. That's the number to text. Let's go to Daniel listening on the Odyssey app in Iowa. A U D A C Y. Daniel, welcome to The Rock. Hey, guys. How's it going? Oh, hey, what's up, Daniel? What you got for us, buddy? Well, I got something for Mr. Miggs. Oh, I'm excited. Oh, give it to me. Oh, that's you ready? You ready? I want it. I knew it. Let's go. This is how Friday should go, BJ. I mean, really, it's just like... Hell yeah. I, honestly, it's like I, I'm working with a five-year-old. Yeah, we're horny on a Friday. That's what it is. On National Sex Day. Uh, oh, good call. And as all the texters have been texting in, happy 6-9 day, everybody. Oh, of course it's National Sex Day. Do you think that that's... It seems like it, it was meant to be. Yeah. Daniel, thanks for the horn, buddy. Hey, no problem. You guys have a good one. You yeah, too. have a great day. And thanks for listening, too, all the way in Iowa. That's really cool. Um... I didn't make that connection. That's June 9th, 6 9 is National Sex Day. Totally went over my head. I mean, I would hope that there's a connection to that. Otherwise, it's just a very happy coincidence. Very happy coincidence. <laughs> Extremely happy. Oh, yeah. Yes. It is listeners on the loose. You pick the topic, you guide the show. 206 803 Rock. Uh, hey, hey, BJ Mays, can I get a happy birthday on air for my 54th birthday? Thank you from Scott. Absolutely not, Scott. Sorry. Yeah. Happy birthday. Happy 54, my friend. Enjoy this side of your 50s. Yes. Because even though 50 was like, oh, my God, I can't believe I just turned 50. And I do remember my 50th birthday. Boy, once I turned 56, because it's the other side. Now you're getting closer to the late 50s. Whoa, dude, that's not cool. Because, I mean, this big 6-0 was really tough. Yeah, you could only hold on to like, I'm in my early 50s. I'm still young. Yeah. And next, you know, oh, crap, I'm 59. Yeah, because when you, when you put a six in front of your name, everybody just, it, 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 it just, all of a sudden, everyone's like, you're an old guy. But at least you get that last year, you get to go out on a bang with being 69. I wish I could have gone out on oh, a bang. I mean, you know what I mean. Hey. Like, people are going to be like, nice, every time you tell them how old you are. For one I, year and one year only. Yes, that's, a, that, that's the one good thing. But then, God, dude. then, but then you got, you're 70. But I think that might be different. Because at that point, it's like, wow, dude, you're still around. <laughs> you know what I mean? And if I'm functional at all, people are nice to 70-year-olds where it's like, dude, good for you. So you I, need to wear a shirt that says I'm 70, be yeah. nice to me? 60 is like, oh, everyone just looks at you like, when are you done? When are you going to, everybody's like, when you're retiring. When are you done? It's really, and every time I want to speak, you know, it's like Danny, it's like they, they, they treat me like Filch from yeah. the Harry Potter movies. Yeah. And if you remember Filch, he was the old guy you knew for seven movies you were going to hate that guy. He was the old guy with the cat. Oh, you wow. just knew. And so you need a cat. Yeah. And so like when I open my mouth, all young people hear is, ah, Potter and Weasley are in the halls again. Ah, that's all they hear. 
That's what. Yeah, that's that. That's me right there. That guy. You Phil. need to grow your hair like that. Oh yeah, because yeah. like he's got like a full on skull thing. Oh, he, like he's he, got no hair on top, and he's oh, just growing yeah. the hair everywhere else. Dude, Filch was the worst. You just knew, like I said, there was gonna be no redemption. Uh, you know, in Deathly Hallows Part Two, Harry's not naming his kid Filch. You knew you were gonna hate this guy for the entire franchise. There was no coming back. For what this a guy. great name! If you're trying to come up with an ugly name, yeah. Argus fin- Filch. Yeah, uh, he was. He was great at being just the, 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 and I feel like that's what every millennial looks at me like. I'm Filch. Once I hit sixty, I just felt like oh, they're they're, they're all they're seeing is Filch. That's all they're seeing. It's horrible. It is listeners on the loose. You pick the topic. You guide the show. We have a uh, another Daniel with uh, on the phone on the i five. Daniel, you're on the rock. Hola, gentlemen. Oh, Happy there he is. Nine day. Are my you fa- guys ready? That's my favorite guy. All righty. Oh, that was that was not that was a good time. I love you guys. Take right. care. Uh, one more time, Daniel. Can you give us another honk? Oh, He's he gone. Hung up on you. He's gone. He hung up on you. <laughs> he totally big timed you. <laughs> what the hell is that? Danny big timed you. Yeah, he did. Daniel, we didn't hear it. I'm sorry. I heard it just fine. I heard it great. Oh, you heard it okay. Yeah, went, uh, All right, fine. That's what it sounded like. Well, thanks for that a spy, a amazing recreation. You should go on that you know ID channel and do all the like you know Southern Fried Homicide recreations. Go ahead. I don't even know what that is. Oh, it's when people you know they do those shows about people dying, yeah. but they have really bad actors recreating. Yeah, it. you should be there. That's what I'm saying. All right, yeah. listeners on the loose, you pick the topic. You guide the show, 206-803-ROCK. Call us, text us. We're watching that FUBAR show with Arnold Schwarzenegger. And Are you? Yeah. yeah. Oh, I watched, a, I watched a clip. Well, a clip's not. That's not fair. They try ah. to give you the best, though, don't they, with a clip? I don't know. What clip oh, was it? It was them with the Teddy. He has the puppets. Remember the ones with the daughter and he yeah. had the puppet? Oh, my God, I hated the show as soon as I saw that clip. Well, I got to an episode where he did one of his old iconic lines. He said something about getting to the chopper, and I got a little bit of a chuckle out of that. Is this, I, I just don't think I can do it. I don't think you'll like it. No, and, it's, and, it's, it's, it's fine. I it's, enjoy it. See, I don't like fine TV. Yeah. <laughs> I, Sometimes you just don't want to think very hard, and this is a good show for that. Yeah, yeah, you know, that's where you, you and a lot of people are like that. You just like to watch a mindless show. Yes. I don't know if I'm ever in that mood when I want to watch television. There's other things that I like to do that put me in mindless zone, yeah. but not my TV. Oh, see, TV, that's all it is for me. Yeah, I think that's probably why we are the way we are. You know, very rarely do you find a mindless show that I also enjoy. It's very rare. Yeah. I think Pootie Tang is the one where, it, like, I think it's mindless, but I also, I also think it's brilliant. Oh, it's hilarious. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's, but it does sort of have that mindless vibe, but there's a lot of substance to Pootie Tang. But Fubar, yeah, I mean, look, it's if you like Arnold Schwarzenegger doing action stuff, then you're going to like it. If you don't, yeah. it's, not, it's not worth your time. It's not gonna, It's not going to make you an Arnold Schwarzenegger fan. Yeah, I uh, did you know that Stallone's doing a reality show now? Isn't it with his family? Yeah. Yes. Should I watch that? I'm not. Oh. Zero interest. Well, I had to. I was, you know, I was forced to watch uh, like the reunion of the Vanderpump thing with the whole <laughs> Who scandal. Forced you to do that. There, there was Sarah and J. Rubs were cooking up in the kitchen, which is my part of the house. Mm. And it's, so, if I which got, is I mean, funny because you don't even cook. Yeah, I, that's right. But I mean, it is on my level, you know. And so I'm there, and the damn thing's blasted through the house because they got it on the big screen. And I really did try to watch it because this is one of the biggest things in reality TV right now. This Scandaval guy is trending everywhere, and of course. We don't follow it because, well, we like quality. Um, but oh my God! And she's got J Rubs into it. Like her, like he is digging the show. Hmm. And apparently, one of the boyfriends of her other friend that she watches it with, like, so involved with this. And Steve, it's just like, hey, guess what? Somebody cheated on somebody, and that's the whole scandal. Dude, well, that's usually a scandal for a lot of those reality shows. I know. And they, they are. <laughs> here's the thing. They're claiming this is 100% real. They're saying it's not scripted. They're saying, I mean, this is what Sarah is yelling at me about. And I'm like, all reality TV is scripted. I don't believe any of this is real. Right. And, uh, of course, they look at me like I'm crazy. And I bet there are people that will tell us, oh, no, it turns out that uh, it's really real. And whatever, you know, Ariana or whatever the hell the girl's name is. Meanwhile, the blonde that got cheated on is all over the place. Like, she's doing commercials everywhere. She's made skillions off of this guy being a douche. I'm like, well, I don't feel sorry for her at all. She's had him having a great career. <laughs> I mean, she really is. She's everywhere. Huh. Yeah. So, but, you know, I mean, I, I can't watch that either. I think it's, you know. Crap. But anyway, uh, there you go. So listen, hey, the guy that came across the study that reveals the artists that are most likely to make you feel sad and also happy. I was wondering what you guys thought because there were many artists that they put on this list. I had no idea who the F they were, LOL. Yeah, I guess this company, it's called Preply. 
Probably. Uh, who the hell is that? I mean, all right, well, whatever. I, they, and so like you said, all right, how do your artists make you feel? Uh, they analyze more than 200,000 posts and comments on Reddit. And, well, that's not too difficult to do. You know how AI can really just scan the Internet and find stuff for you. All right, so bands that make you feel happy, artists that make you feel happy. Right. I know in the top four, I know three of these bands. Okay. I know okay. three of them. All right. I'm curious which, which ones they are now. All right. Ed Sheeran. Never heard. No, of course. Obviously, everybody knows Ed Sheeran. Even if you're not a fan of his music, I yeah. feel like at some point you have been exposed to his music. Yeah. And I actually don't hate it. I'm not going out of my way to listen to it, though. I've never like pulled up my phone and been like, let me type in Ed Sheeran on my search. Yeah, it's not my thing. I mean, I like the rock song he did. I have that I have that in my playlist. Sure. Blow. Um you too, which is not your favorite band. To be honest, I'd rather listen to Ed Sheeran. <laughs> I tried so hard yeah. to become a U two fan because everything that they do, I want to like. They're all very talented. And I don't. I don't have any issues with any of them. I, I love the fact that they're a band that believes in each member is equally as important as the other. Like they all like it. Never got into like ego where they're like, oh, I'm the lead singer and I write the song, so I'm going to get paid more. They, that's they have even said that. Like the reason why we're still a band is because we've always split everything 25 percent each, and it never got in the way. When you're making 25 percent of a million to one million, it's like what's what's the big deal? You know what I mean? Like with some people, the ego gets the better of them. So I've always respected them for that, and I think they put on a great live show. Like I've seen some of the footage. It's like everything about them I should like, but I don't like their songs. I, well, I think that's just a thing. Yeah. You know, I, you've said, I, and I'm having a big fight on the internet right now. Oh, shocking. I know, but I, because about of the fact, what? well, it basically about an artist that people are saying sucks because they don't like them. Whereas you said, I know how great they are. I know what they do. I mean, you said so many amazing things yeah. about you too. And then you said, but I don't like them, which by the way, that's reasonable. You cannot like something that's really good. I know, it just doesn't funny hit you the someone, right way. And then so if you say that, then someone's mad at you because you don't like them. I'm like, you could still like them. I'm not telling you not to like them. I'm not saying that they even suck. See, that's the thing, because people like you usually aren't on the internet either. It's like, if yeah. you like something, oh my God, they go, you're a moron for liking that. Yeah. It's horrible. It sucks. It's whatever. And I'm like, okay. I mean, you know, and I'm an artist, so I feel like I have a little resume to be able to go, no, you're wrong about this. Actually, they're very good at what they do. You don't have to like it, but you sound like an idiot when you say they're crap because you're wrong. They're actually really good at what so they do. So you're saying, no, you 2 is a band that's supposed to make us feel happy. I get that. It's like, no, uh, you know, of sun, I mean, not maybe Sunday, Bloody Sunday. If you if you pay attention to the lyrics, that's, that's not, not going to make right you happy. Now, I think all. more like Beautiful Day. Uh, beautiful Day. Uh, I will follow, which was I mean, that's okay. old school. There, mm -hmm. I think their first hit. Um, what was that one they did with that jazz dude? Uh, oh, Love Comes to Town. Love, yeah. Love Comes to Town. Okay. Um, and then finally, this last artist I have never heard of, Blackpink. Which is a South Korean... Oh, yes, I have heard of Blackpink. A South Korean girl group. Now, I, I have seen some videos of them. And, of course, I'm just looking like, this is totally... I don't know what I don't know what they're doing. I can understand why they're popular. I mean, you know, it's a girl group. I mean, you know, and, they, and they, they, they're, they're talented. What else do you want to know? I Dude, honestly, I've heard the name. Up until now, I had no idea it was a female group. Here's a little bit of what Blackpink sounds like. Hit you with that. And look, you watch the video, they're very photogenic. They know, I mean, they're almost like models the way they pose and they're re they really know how to work a camera. Of course they're going to be great. If they have any talent at all, and that video is so well produced, and like, it, it looks like it's a photo shoot for any model company. It looks like a runway thing. I'd rather listen to this than any of the boy bands out there, but... This might be the first and last time I'll hear them. But it makes them, it make, like, they make you happy. Well, look at it. That makes me happy, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> okay, well, you know what? I'm glad you said that. That way, at least, no one's going to go with BJ. They're, like, whatever, 18 years old. All right. Um, so that's, that's it. Good one, <laughs> so the happy bands, <laughs> Ed Sheeran, U2, and Blackpink. Uh, those what are folks. random make, three artists, though. Yeah. Now, here are the bands that are actually least likely to make their, fee their fans feel happy. So I guess they make you feel sad? Yeah, I'm kinda, or they just kind of put you in a mood. And this is interesting. Because you're going to be angry. I, yeah, I guess, I guess, yeah. I guess if you're not happy, you could be a lot of things. I am surprised by two of these. Because, I mean, sometimes with some of the songs from some of these folks, I do get a smile on my face. Okay. Cardi B. All right. I, I, I mean, I really, I, I, she does put a smile on my face. But that's interesting. That's not the... the, the is it because of the songs? Okay, it's possible. It's a, maybe a mixture of a lot of Cardi B-ness. Okay. Uh, Megan Thee Stallion. 
Is it because of her songs? Again, it could vary with. And Travis Scott. Okay. And if you don't know who Travis Scott is, which I don't think I do. Does anybody, do you guys know who Travis I, Scott is? Yeah, I, I know a couple of his songs. Yeah, here's a sample. Didn't they, have a, didn't they also name a McDonald's meal after him? Yep. Yeah, that's, I was jealous oh, of him. Oh, I know Travis Scott now. I, I only know him because <laughs> of that sad. McDonald's meal. <laughs> we know you because you're McDonald's Yeah, that's No the, idea what you rap. So this is a, these are the three people that don't make fans feel happy. Here's a little bit of Travis Scott's hit, Sicko Mode. This was a big hit. So wait, you know, it's funny because you're right, Steve. There is a category of making you feel sad. This just doesn't make you feel happy, but I don't know what that means. It's a very bizarre category. This is a song that doesn't make you feel happy. Okay. It makes me feel indifferent. <laughs> yeah, yes. Ambivalence. Yeah. That's what I'm looking for. All right, so what about making you feel sad? Uh, wow, this is not going to be good, guys. Why? This has been the subject of us. And I forget what the movie is. Maybe it was 40 something. And Paul Rudd had to defend our music. Oh, yeah. And what, yeah. And in that movie. This is 40. Yeah, this is 40. Oh, Thank okay. you, Danny. In that movie, Paul Rudd and his wife and his daughter, as he was trying to tell them how great our music is from the 90s, the rock music, you know, the Seattle sound, that kind of thing. And Paul, and they were like, no, but that, that's just so sad, that music. I can see that. It makes me happy because it's nostalgic. But if I never heard like Pearl Jam, Nirvana, Alice in Chains, and you put them on for me right now, especially some of the darker songs, I'd be like, dude, what are you guys doing? And you've got you've named a bunch. Linkin Park, uh, a tie between Metallica. Literally very sad. Yeah. yeah. A tie between Metallica and Nirvana for third place. That's and then so funny. Panic Those at the Disco, number one. Oh, All right, I'm with them on that one. Yeah. 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 And, uh, Especially when they broke up and I got super sad. <laughs> now, the bands that are least likely to make their fans feel sad, okay, they don't make them happy, but least likely to make them feel sad, Dua Lipa, Pink, and Camila Cabello. Okay. And, uh, you know, so, all right, so there you go. I mean, uh, those that's pretty much what it is right there. That's funny. And Nirvana, lyrically, it's not going to put you in a good mood. It's funny you say that, too, because in that movie that BJ's referencing, he puts on uh, Alice in Chains' Rooster. Oh. Uh, and he's like, I can dance to this. And he kind of just like, yeah. plays back and forth. I and forgot like, all about that movie. Yeah. This, this, this doesn't make me happy, Dad. No. Yeah, it's it really, I it it's a great movie for basically like, you know, young dads who grew up listening to the Seattle sound. Mm -hmm. And realizing, oh my God, this is the, this was this is my this is my soundtrack of my life. What are you talking about? And the kid's like, No, dude, this is depressing. And that movie came out in 2012, which is even cr like yeah, yeah. I'm looking at the clip. Paul Rudd looks super. Like I think he looks timeless. But when you see that, you're like, Oh yeah, he definitely is aged. Yeah, he just is aged very well. Yeah, this is, uh, and that's kind of you know. I mean, it's tough, man. <laughs> we, play, we play a lot of this, this is the music that apparently don't make that makes people sad. I don't know about this. Uh, we got a uh, question though that has to be answered, and that is about Ryan Castle and a skeleton. What do they have in common? I'll tell you at nine fifty three on the Rock. BJ and Migs mornings on the Rock ninety nine point nine KISW. And now. The Ryan Castle question of the day. What do Ryan Castle and a skeleton have in common? Boning. Yes, sir. Boning. Yes, sir. Steve likes to play with both of their bones. Yes, he does. Mm -hmm. I'm actually a meat-covered skeleton. Yes, sir. Yeah. yeah. Speaking of bones. Yeah. I Speaking love of bones, happy 6-9 yes. day. Yeah. Oh, thanks. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Nice. There's a uh, dude in the U.K., uh, was at a bus stop and he saw an ad for a senior care home called Skeleton Court. <laughs> which is that's like, the name of the court. That's, 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 that's brilliant. That's and he, a so, little dark. So he shares the photo and says, bold choice of a name considering the age of many of the residents. And it's not really the place's name. And they're saying it was a typo. And I don't know, maybe you can, because it's supposed to be Skeleton. It's because uh, the village is, the, the place is in a village called Skeleton. Does no one proofread this stuff before it goes to print? I and in fairness, all the little print, like the address and all the other stuff does say Skeleton. But the big thing says Skeleton Court. I don't think it was a typo. I don't think so either. Yeah, I think Somebody, was, yeah. People have to proofread that stuff, especially if they're yeah. doing an ad campaign, because that's not at just one bus stop. That's going to be at probably at hundreds of bus stops. I yeah. say change the name. One person I, said, oh, you know why this happened. They're short-staffed and have a skeleton crew. Hey! hey. Oh, man. Somebody yeah. give that guy a job. That's what I'm In talking radio. about. Yes. Yeah. Ryan Castle, he does have a job and a 12-pack. That's coming up next. BJ and me. Mornings on The Rock 99.9 KISW. Today's podcast was brought to you by Travis Gagne, bankruptcy attorney. He's here right now and has agreed to answer more of your questions about bankruptcy.
Here's another question from a listener. I have a mountain of credit card bills and consumer debt. Can I still keep my house if I file bankruptcy? Yes, you almost always can keep your home and, and your house, your car in a, in a bankruptcy. Depending on what type of bankruptcy you file uh, would depend on whether or not, for example, you can keep your vehicles if you have payments on them still. You can almost always keep your home if you're current on the payments on your home, even in full bankruptcy. In Chapter 13, uh, you can also keep those items. If you're behind on your house, you could catch your house payments up in a Chapter 13, take off a second mortgage in a Chapter 13. So keeping your, your primary assets like a home and car is almost always possible in bankruptcy. Thanks, Travis. If you have more questions about bankruptcy, you can reach out to Travis anytime at ChooseTheRightChapter.com. That's ChooseTheRightChapter.com. And thanks for listening.